Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler present Big 12 football. Today from Kyle Field in College Station, Texas, it's the 1-1 one one Oklahoma State Cowboys opening conference play against the 2-0 Texas Aggies. Drew Goodman along with Dave Lapham. Until 1963, this was a military institution, and there's still more than 2,100 in the Corps of Cadets at Texas A&M. In fact, they commissioned more officers out of this institution than anywhere in the country other than West Point, Annapolis, and down in Colorado Springs at the Air Force Academy, Dave. And Drew, the setting here today is just unbelievable, and uh, it really makes you proud to be an American, to be quite honest with you. And all I can say is God bless America and each and every person that's gathered here today. You know, the president has said that everybody should strive to get back to normalcy in their lives. And uh, in, on Saturdays, it's college football in this country. And uh, college football can be a, a galvanizing uh, galvanizing meeting place for, you know, for people. And it can galvanize communities and the country. I think it's going to help. Well put, Dave. We talked to Mark Farris, the outstanding quarterback at Texas A&M, yesterday about what it has meant to this community. I think it's been a little different around campus. I mean, we're selling all the T-shirts for the red, white, and blue. Uh, red, white, and blue out. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a different atmosphere around. I mean, you see uh, the cups and the chain link fence saying God bless America and all that stuff. So I think, it's, like I said, it's going to end up being a good thing for our country. I think it's going to bring people closer together than they've ever been before. And uh, I mean, it's a terrible tragedy and your hearts go out to the to the families. But uh, I mean, you got to move on and hopefully, you know, the game will be able to bring, you know, for three hours, be able to bring people some kind of some kind of peace. I do think that uh, that football is a is a distraction in a positive way. You know, it gets people's minds back on life as as usual, life life as normal, as best you possibly can for for at least a, a three-hour time frame, like like Mark Ferris was talking about. And, and uh, everybody here, I think, is excited about the opportunity to not only to witness a good college football game, but to be with each other, you know, and, and rally around each other. And that's what it's all about in this great country of ours. No question about it, you know, sports and, and everything else has been put in proper perspective over the last 10, 11 days. However, it's interesting because sports, in a strange way, is perhaps more important right now right. to create diversions for people and to realize that, yes, we move on. The all-time series, 12-4 to in favor of Texas A&M, and the Aggies are 5-0 and in Big 12 play against... Oklahoma State the last year came down to the final snap of the game before they prevailed in Stillwater 21 to 16. The Texas A&M won the toss, deferred, and Oklahoma State said that's okay, we'll kick off. Right. Dewan Gentry and Sammy Davis back deep. Cole Farden, a true freshman, will kick it off for the Cowboys. It's Gentry. And he'll get out to about the 22-23 yard line. Michael Cox down on, or check it, Chris Massey down on special teams to make the tackle. A return of 21. Our singular offensive starters for the Aggies. Mark Farris, a school record 2,500 plus yards throwing last year. And look at this, almost 300 yards a game through two games this year. A couple of touchdowns, a couple of interceptions. The offensive line is led by Seth McKinney. 41 consecutive starts in 41 ball games here in College Station. He is a terrific one, an All-American candidate. Good wide receiver crew. They're going to miss Bethel Johnson. He had a splenectomy last week. Is out for the year. He was their leading receiver. And Farris out of the gun. will hand it off to Joseph, who gets just a couple of yards. The 220-pound redshirt freshman from Houston. It'll be second and eight as we check the defensive starters for Oklahoma State today. And up front, Kevin Williams, a very good player. The defensive tackle, he's a 290-pounder. Kareem Smith, a junior college transfer, has done well. Levels and Robinson, 1-2 on the team in tackles through two ball games. And in the secondary, they run a nickel package. Craig and Bombback have been very good. Massey is a tremendous athlete. He's playing with a bad shoulder. A toss sweep. Joseph trying to get wide and nowhere to go. He's going to lose three yards. 
Greg Richmond, 45, led the charge. Also, Llewellyn Brown was in the neighborhood. Oklahoma State always runs well defensively, it seems. And Texas A&M came out in their unbalanced line, Drew. Both tackles to the right side of the formations. This is De La Torre, the, the tight end. You have a left guard and a tight end. Both tackles to the strong side. Trying to stretch Oklahoma's defense out a little bit more, but great inside-out pursuit by Oklahoma State. They were not fooled by the lineup, by the configuration. They adjusted well and defended the play. Third and 11. They need the 33-yard line. Barris throws it in the flat to Joseph. And he'll get just a couple. Good reaction by Oklahoma State. And it is three and out for the Aggies. Marcus Jones was there, number 15. Very nice defensive stand by Oklahoma State. Texas A&M wanted to get their running game established early in this football game. They were unable to do so on this particular series, the first series of the football game. Look at this formation. Look at this formation. Wow, this is a little different. And then, uh, Punt team was lined up near the hash bar. Cody Skates gets it away. T.D. Bryant back at his 35. And he'll drag a tackler across the 40 to the 42-yard line. A return of seven after a 41-yard punt. Let's take a look at the singular offensive starters for Oklahoma State. Their quarterback's a big man. Asso Pogai. 62 percent he's 6'4 225 pounds he's a sophomore very bright kid and he'll be at the controls up front this offensive line has started 68 games collectively so they're a veteran group good receiving crew tatum bell has great speed at tailback and they'll hand to the fullback and mike denard gets a couple they utilize their fullback a little bit more than most teams around the country. Let's check the defensive starters for the wrecking crew, the Texas Aggies. And traditionally, under Mike Hankowitz, they're in an odd front in their base defense. Rocky Bernard is back after missing last year with a knee. Brian Gamble, the leading tackler. Penright can really play in the secondary, led by the two safeties, Brooks and Keel. Davis, a very good cover man. He has three picks already. Here's Bell, and he's tackled by Rocky Bernard. Bernard is the active leader in tackles. In fact, a three-year starter, Evan Peroni, also around the football. Both teams trying to get those running games established early. Sugar huddle for Oklahoma State, right to the line of scrimmage, huddling right at the line of scrimmage and communicating from there. They jump. The crowd noise causing problems for Oklahoma State. They jump before the snap of the football. Kyle Eaton on that left side. Well, when you come into a stadium that has 80-plus thousand people, it's obligatory during the week to work on crowd noise, and Oklahoma State did that. They call it headache drill. Yeah, headache drill. An hour and a half of the practice deafening crowd noise or, or noise pumped into the stadium that they were practicing at back at Stillwater, and coaches couldn't communicate, couldn't communicate with each other, couldn't communicate with the players. And you see the sugar huddle going on. Look at all the skilled people behind the linemen just bunched up, and now they disperse to their respective formation. Silent snap count. Whole guy will lift the leg, and there's the silent snap count. Third and long. Whole guy's going to try to run, and he's going to take a lick at the four. Well short of a first down, Jared Morris and Ty Warren. So it's three and out for Oklahoma State. Of both teams initially trying to get their running games going and neither able to get it done. Oklahoma State coming into this football game, number three in the country against the rush, allowing only 33 yards a game. Texas A&M wanted to test that, and I think they will again on this possession when they get the football. There's Dewan Gentry. Scott Elder has done a nice job through two ball games. Nearly a high snap, and he gets it away, and it's a pretty good punt. And that's a, that's a halo infraction. Yeah, that's more than an infraction. <laughs> that's, he broke the halo. It shattered it. Man, the Chevis. A 38-yard punt and a wonderful form tackle, albeit a little bit early, <laughs> by Mr. Williams. Man. Well, Darren Williams is a true freshman. And I don't know what high school uh, league he played in, but I think that was a violation the there also. On the kickers, contact foul, 15 yards from the spot of the foul, touchdown. No score in College Station. We're back in a moment. 
Department of State unions use scare tactics to threaten that Oklahomans will lose health benefits. But Oklahoma doctors and the Oklahoma Hospital Association say not true. No one loses health benefits. Unions threaten lower wages, but surrounding right-to-work states have higher incomes and Oklahomans will go up too. Unions say right-to-work is a bad law. Do you really believe right-to-work supporters David Boren, Don Nichols, George Nye, and Frank Keating would do anything to hurt Oklahomans? Trust your Oklahoma neighbors. Vote yes on right-to-work. A Consumer's Digest Best Buy, AAA's top pick, the most award-winning minivan on the planet, now has a seven-year, 50,000-mile extended powertrain Care Plus limited warranty and a $2,000 cash allowance, which makes Dodge Caravan one of the best values on the planet. See, compare, drive, Dodge, during the Team Dodge sales event. Hey, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. You ain't seen nothing yet. The Senior PGA Tour's top players will descend on Oklahoma City and Gallardia Golf and Country Club to compete for the largest purse in Senior Tour history. Be a part of all the excitement and drama. Stop by one of our sponsor locations. Tickets are available by calling 525-TOUR or at any Mathis Brothers or Golf USA Metro location. I know I'm going to be there. You better be there, too. No score just underway, first quarter from College Station, Texas, and a sold-out Kyle Field. Here's the violation. Yeah, pretty pretty obvious. Uh, you know, the first thing that has to happen if you're covering a punt is you have to give the punt return man an opportunity to make a catch of the football. Well, that's a nice form tackle by Williams, but it's not going to do you any good because there's a penalty interference with the opportunity to catch the football in the return. So no no uh, no real harm done there to be honest with you. I, I think only a five yard penalty. I'm not sure that that penalty is quite severe enough because you got to figure if he doesn't make the play, the return man might pick up at least five yards on his punt return anyway. I don't think that's that bad of a penalty to be honest with you. Joseph the lone setback behind Ferris from the 31. And he runs through Elbert Craig for a couple of extra yards. Solid gain on first down as we take a look at the Aggies game plan today. Yeah, for Texas A&M, the, the first thing that they'd like to get done is get that running game going. They'd like to get the inside running game established and take some pressure off of those wide receivers. They want to compete in the kicking game. Their, their field goal kicker, Skates, is 1 for 5 on the season, 0 for 3 last week against Wyoming. And big chunks of real estate, runs of over 15 yards, passes of over 20 yards, the big play potential. Cluster of receivers down at the bottom of the screen on second and six out of the shotgun. Now Mark Ferris calls timeout. One of the interesting things about watching the Aggies now is they throw the ball a lot more than they ever did in years past. We'll come back in a moment. don't mind, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I borrowed this from a friend. Sir, there must be like a million trillion pages here. That's all right. I have cash. There's just no substitute for the real thing. Like the real Southwestern Bell Yellow Pages. The one with the most complete information is the only one you'll need. You're not, uh, you're not doing those on white paper, are you?
What a setting today in College Station, Texas. As we talked about, normally maroon, but everybody in attendance, based on where they're sitting, either red, white, and blue. All right, depending on the, the level of the stadium. And $100,000 raised for the, uh, for the cause due to this patriotic display of red, red, white, and blue throughout the stadium. So I'll tell you what, it's uh, in, in times of, of, uh, of desperation or trouble, the United States of America rallies. There's no question about it. The Aggies looking at second and six. Blitz coming, and this one's blown up from the get-go. Dwayne Levels came unblocked on a blitz, and it'll be another big loss for the Aggies. Yeah, and that's got to be disconcerting to Texas A&M because it's just basically watch watch the blitz here watch him come and, and, and it's a recognition problem you know you have to adjust they were trying to run a counter they were pulling linemen backside guard backside tackle levels did a good job of splitting the gap between the guard and tackle you can clip in that plane within a yard and a half of the line of scrimmage should have been clipped to the ground this guy leading tackler last year and doing the same again this he's legit 250 pounds in the best shape of his career. Third down at 13. Farris, time breaking down, and he's just got to throw it away. Incomplete. So again, the Aggies held without a first down, and they'll have to punt. Llewellyn Brown putting some pressure on. There's Richmond going off the field. Greg Richmond, they'll try to play a lot of players. people fresh. Cody Skates back out there. TD Bryant. Look at this punt formation. It's like a swinging gate on the punt. And then they line themselves up, make, make Oklahoma State think a little bit in their alignment. Boy, pressure came on the corner. Great punt by Skates. And Bryant back to his 17. Trying to get to the wall. He's shifty and he gets out to the 30-yard line. 54 yards on the punt. A return of 12. Terrence Keel down on special teams to make the tackle. A special announcement from the American Property Network. You can buy cars for as low as $29 per month. Choose from thousands of cars repossessed and seized by the U.S. Marshal, IRS, FBI, and private organizations. Call 1-800-300-4768. Foreclosed homes and distressed properties are selling for as low as $199 per month. Call 1-800-300-4768. For current auction listings, call 1-800-300-4768. Call toll-free. <laughs> Stone Promotions brings you Rockin' Instrumentals, featuring 34 of your all-time jukebox favorites. These are the songs that bring back magical memories. 34 original hits by the original artist together in this one great collection. Rockin' Instrumentals is not sold in stores. Here's how to order. Call this toll-free number now for Rockin' Instrumentals. Two cassettes, $19.98. Two CDs, $26.98. Plus $4.95 shipping. Have your credit card ready and call now. Big 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By the thousands of drink combinations at Sonic, America's drive-in. By Sitco, your neighborhood Sitco is proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. By Southwestern Bell, the official telecommunications company of the Big 12. And by Fast Sign, sign and graphic solutions made simple. No first downs for the Aggies. No first downs yet for Oklahoma State. Pogai to throw on first down, maybe. And he's going to fall, and that's it in college football. Getting credit for the sack will be Ty Warren. He kind of tripped him up. He leads the team in tackles for losses this year now with five. Well, for Oklahoma State, what they want to get done today 
in terms of his scouting report is ball security. They've lost six fumbles in two games. That's not good. Cope with the crowd noise. Deal with it. You can see how they're communicating at the line of scrimmage in the sugar huddle and red zone success. When they get down inside the 20, don't settle for field goals. Touchdown. Here's an option, and Tatum Bell is tripped up by Sammy Davis right after he got the pitch. No gain on the play. It'll be third and 15. Davis, a uh, complete corner. Yeah, he's got three interceptions on the season, which is tied for most in the country on a ratio per game basis. One and a half interceptions per game, and he's very strong in run support as well. The Cowboys need the 39-yard line. Hogai will have to throw it away, and Oklahoma State unable to move the football. Titanic defensive struggle at this point. Both teams not giving an inch on the defensive side of the football. We were looking in the secondary. There was no one available. Nobody. They, they changed the launch point. They got Pogai out of pocket. The protection was pretty good. No pressure from Texas A&M's defensive front four, but seven dropped into coverage, giving Pogai no holes to throw into down the field. Gentry back at his own 33. Look at this, a fake, hey. and it's there. Maybe. No. No. Elders tripped Brooks. up to 31 by the big play oh. man, Jay Brooks. How about that play? Wow. A fake punt from inside your own 20-yard line. At the 25-yard line was the line of scrimmage, and it's fourth and 14. So when you roll the dice on fourth and 14 and it doesn't work for you, you have a short field to defend. That's a lot of confidence in your defense. Saw something, fake punt, direct snap to the punter. Nice hole hope opening up in the middle, but watch Jay Brooks, a heat-seeking missile just coming right after it. Unbelievable play by Jay Brooks. Did he close on the ball carrier big time? Puts a lot of pressure on the Oklahoma State defense right now. Short field at the 31-yard line. My question is, did he do that on his own? Ferris wants a shuttle to Joseph, and again, nothing doing. As Dwayne Levels blew that up. Also, in there is Kevin Williams, number 58. Well, I'll tell you, Drew, if, El if, if he did that by on, on his own, if Elder did that on his own with that field position, that is a gutsy young man or, or, or a foolish or, yeah, young or, man. Or doesn't have all of his uh, marbles aligned <laughs> for this encounter because tremendous pressure put on his defensive football team now. Even a field goal, the way this is starting out, is, is a big scoring opportunity. Ferris will go out of the gun. They have a screen set up. But the play's made. Chris Massey there. Jamar Taylor made the catch. Greg Richmond made a great play. He's being blocked and was still able to get a piece of the tackle. Well, one of the things that Oklahoma State wanted to make sure of, no easy plays in the middle of the football field for Texas A&M's passing game. Nice job. The screen executed decently, but well, that's a tremendous defensive effort right there by Richmond to play off the block like he did and, and clog the play up because that's the most physical receiver Taylor is on the Texas A&M football team. Third and six. And they'll run it with Joe Weber, and he's going to be pretty close. Decision time. Do you go for it on fourth and short, or do you kick the field goal? I think you go for it. Your, your field goal kicker is one of five. That's not a given. 0 for 3 last, last week. I think you go for it. You say to your offensive line, hey, I have an All-American up the middle, self, Seth McKinney, and I think R.C. Slocum's thinking the same thing. If we don't get, we're not good enough to get this foot, foot and a half, they don't deserve the early lead in this football game. And he's brought Stacy Jones and another fullback, so they basically have a full house backfield. Jones will line up on the wing, Weber and Joseph. And that'll be a first down. Good run by Joseph. Tripped up by Derek Williams. The initial first down of this football game comes at the 5.48 mark of the first quarter. And it's the initial journey into the red zone, which sounds strange. The reason the first first down of the game gets you in the red zone is an aborted 
fake punt. Not a boarded, an unsuccessful, I should say, fake punt by Oklahoma State. Fourth and 14, Elder keeps the football, comes up about four yards short. Jay Brooks makes a great play. Uh -oh. Kevin Williams took a shot at Ferris when he put his knee down. Yeah, he gave himself up, and he still got hit. Ferris isn't happy about that. And he's lucky that wasn't a personal snap. foul. Offense offsides on the defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And that's one area that Oklahoma State has been very, very sound in. They have not been penalized much at all this season, but... On this particular occasion, Oklahoma State trying to jump the gun. Their, their penetrating scheme, their, their one gap. They attack a gap, get in the backfield, disrupt and penetrate. That time they were a little bit soon. Seth McKinney did not lose the football, and they were jumping. Here's Groins with great speed. To the two-yard line, first and goal, Aggies. Nice block by Murphy. Terrence Murphy giving his teammate the perimeter, the sideline to operate. Goins has got tremendous speed. They want to get him the football out in space. You see, it's almost like a little receiver screen. As it turns out, inside Murphy has just got a great seal block to get Goins to the edge. Joseph, the lone setback. Goins is in the slot to the top. Joseph will drive into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas A&M. First career touchdown for the redshirt freshman from Houston. Slightly separated shoulder, but it doesn't look like the contact's bothering them all that much. They have a special pad on the shoulder and special shoulder pads to absorb the hit, the shock of the hit. He's lowering those shoulder pads and thumping up squarely to the line of scrimmage. Cody Skates is, Dave mentioned, double duty, punter and place kicker. And he slaps the extra point through, 7-0. Texas Aggies after a botched fake punt by Oklahoma State gave the Aggies a short field. It's Pink Flamingo Month at Sonic. Hurry in for our awesome new Pink Flamingo drink with fresh strawberries and real lemons. Or create your own favorite flavor from thousands of cool combinations. Any large drink is now just 99 cents. Who said summer has to end? And for more flavor sensations, don't forget our toaster sandwiches. Like our bacon cheddar burger toaster sandwich. With smoked cheddar cheese, crispy bacon slices, fresh lettuce, and juicy tomatoes. All on thick Texas toast. Only at Sonic. your business moving in the right direction, you need to make the best decisions about your image. Fast Signs offers sign and graphic solutions to make your choices simple. With locations coast to coast, Fast Signs is ready to keep your business moving. Fast Signs, sign and graphic solutions made simple. Call, click, or visit a Fast Signs location near you. football and it's going to skip through the end zone so Oklahoma State will start at the 20 yard line. Well, Scott Elder on a fake punt on fourth and 14 from his own 25 yard line didn't get there. Jay Brooks made a great open field tackle. Watch the lane that, that, that shows up for him. I mean it's unbelievable. Now Brooks Brooks just tremendous effort. That is an unbelievable open field tackle. James big play Brooks and then there's a downhill runner right there. Now he gets that pad level down and thumps it into the end zone. Keith Joseph. Rolled the dice and came up snake eyes. With a fake punt. Tatum Bell, nice little cut initially, and then Penwright depleted him after about three or four yards. One of the things Les Miles told us, and we've heard other coaches say this, on the road in a hostile environment, punting is not always a bad thing. Right. Well, I think that they had studied film all week long, and, and really when he broke the line of scrimmage, I thought he had a great shot. You have to give Brooks a tremendous amount of credit for making a big play, and that's why they call him James Big Play Brooks. 
Initially, it looked like Elder might get there, but Brooks reacted very, very favorably. Woods, and that's a first down. He's their go-to guy, Rashawn Woods, a sophomore from Oklahoma City with his 15th catch of the year. He had 10 in the opener, a loss down in Hattiesburg against Southern Miss. He's a perfectionist. Everything he does in practice has to be perfect. He, tremendous studier of film. Here's a big, big receiver. Get him the ball in space and let him lower his pads and square him up and get up the football field for positive yards. Nice play. Drop by Woods, and you won't see that frequently. And a good strike by Pogai. That was right there. Woods let the ball get into his shoulder pads. Get your hands and arms extended and get catch the football out in front of your body. This one gets into his pads and bounces around. You can't let the ball come to you. You have to reach out and go get the football. 3.30 to go in the opening quarter. The Aggies lead 7-0. A draw bell. Ooh, oh, wow. He took a Man, huge wall up for Ty Warren. Man. That play ended abruptly. Ooh. You know, that, uh, that was not a stone wall. That's Ty Warren. Man, he's played off his block and just absolutely lit it up. Just a tremendous effort. Boy, you, you, don't, you don't get those opportunities all that often. Now you can hear that one up here. Third and ten. Aggies bring four. Whoa. All right, we we'll get there. Another big hit. Penright came off the edge, and Oklahoma State, after a first down, goes backwards. Second sack today for the Aggies, and Pogai's hurt, and they're real thin at quarterback. No doubt about that. The biggest challenge for an offensive line in a noisy stadium is pass protection. Getting off the line of scrimmage. Your only advantage is the snap count. When that's negated and the defensive line's getting an equal snap to you off the football, you get trouble. That's what happened there. They got beaten off the line of scrimmage. Elder gets it away, drives Gentry back. And Gentry will get away from it. AM came after that one, boy. Came after that punt. 51 yards on the punt for Elder. We talked to Les Miles yesterday about a number of topics, and one topic you don't ordinarily address, security. For the first time, I've asked uh, security questions. What happens if? And um, the responsibility of a head coach to bring his team in and play for victory or if something else happens is one thing, but to make sure that that head coach is responsible for the safety of his players is another concern. Concern for everyone. Absolutely. As a head coach, you feel responsible for all the young men that travel with you in your program? Yeah, it's just an added uh, burden of responsibility. I mean, the duties of a, of a head coach during the course of the weekend on game day are numerous. Then you add something that's significant. It's mind-boggling, really. A week ago, Tuesday, Oklahoma State attempted to practice on Tuesday, did not, as one would imagine, get much done, and then had a team meeting. The Aggies canceled their practice and instead had a team meeting. Because they had a bye week already scheduled. Oklahoma State had to, at that point, had to play. It was tough. Three holes, two. Joseph slashes for about four. Boy runs into Dwayne Levels. AM still trying to get that ground game established, that ground game on track. Looks like Oklahoma State's ranking of number three in the country against the rush is substantial. I mean, it's it's the real deal. They're only giving up 33 yards per game rushing. Now, they played Louisiana Tech, who will throw it 100,000 times, not really run the ball much, but they're not giving much ground to AM early today. And they're working on Pogai on the sideline. His left shoulder and yep. arm, the focus point. Third and seven. Barris in the wow. flat. And Cooper comes up and hits Joseph. He didn't see Cooper coming. And Joseph is slow to rise. Three and out for Texas A&M. 
Well, that's why the, the, the chance that was taken on the fake punt was such a big one. The way the defenses are playing, field position is such a big, big factor. But you, you look at a, a, a textbook tackle here in the open field, go up and take the legs out, and Cooper did exactly that. Great play. Here's the swing and gate punt formation once again, making sure that Oklahoma State gets lined up properly while well, they'll run the fake. They're going to set up a return. Oh, man, this is a howitzer. Woo. Skates drives Bryant to the five. And he does a good job getting it back to the 22-yard line. 63 yards in the air, 17 on the return. Byron Jones came down and made the tackle. 7-0, Aggies. You make it fun. You make it good. You make it one big neighborhood. You make the world taste better. You make the world taste better. Dr. Pepper, you make the world taste better. Yeah, come on. Dr. Pepper, you make the world taste better. This is Boflex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. Strength training with Boflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Boflex is real. The results are real. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Boflex, the power is yours. Music for You presents Once Upon a Song. 34 great story songs by the artists who made them famous. Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. Today, Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. And the cats in the cradle and the shoes. Once upon a song on two cassettes or two CDs. This offer is not available in stores, so call now. Call this toll-free number now to order Once Upon a Song. Two cassettes, $21.99. Two CDs, $26.99. Plus shipping and handling. Have your credit card ready and call now. One quarter closed in College Station, Texas. The Aggies leading Oklahoma State 7-0. Back with Dave Lapham upstairs. I'm Drew Goodman, the biggest player of the game. A, a fake punt that looked like it was there. And unfortunately for Scott Elder, Jay Brooks tackled him a few yards shy. Well, I think Scott Elder could make the call when he saw a certain look. But you have to factor in field position. You have to factor in how far you have to run for the first down. I'm not sure all that was accomplished. Unfortunate at this point because that is the difference in the football game. A defensive battle where a field position was huge and it didn't work out for Oklahoma State and Pogai is out of there it's a true freshman Josh Fields at quarterback and Tatum Bell keeps his feet good hard running for about seven yards Sammy Davis 22 will be one of those given credit for a tackle Josh Fields at Stillwater High School last year local kid Threw for over 2,000 yards. They were hoping to keep the red shirt on him, but behind Pogai has been Chris Massey, who's a strong safety and a former option quarterback in high school. He's been taking snaps in high school, but now you have a true freshman. Look at this. Pogai has the pads off and is headed to the locker room. And the way they were rotating that left arm, you wonder if it's an elbow, shoulder. I mean, there could have been, could have been any one of the... You land on your elbow a lot of times you can do damage to your elbow or your shoulder the impact goes up into your shoulder so look, it might be that left shoulder time at oklahoma state let's get an update from jim knox at field level okay actually guys it's his left arm they're taking him in right now he's in the locker room they're going to have an x-rayed and as soon as we get word we'll get right back with you but it is the left arm and Pogai is in a great deal of pain right now 
So obviously they're, they're x-raying it to see if it's a fracture of the left arm. And here is the play. Poe guy in the pocket, and he gets clobbered right as, as he's trying to tuck the ball and step up in the pocket by Penwright. Penwright hits him right on that left arm, and he gets the left arm pinned between Penwright and his body. So how would you like to make your college football debut College Station, Texas, as an opponent at the quarterback position. That's a serious adversity that uh, Josh Fields is dealing with right now. The communication is the biggest thing. The offensive line on the football field at the line of scrimmage, all the skill people are at the sideline with the Oklahoma State coaching staff. Now, this kid's a very good athlete. I mean, he was highly recruited, a very good high school baseball player. Had some baseball options as well good bloodlines was mom played basketball in the late 70s early 80s at Oklahoma State the gene pool right there yeah. for the Cowboys we're in number 13 a guy named Dan Marino wore that number with uh, very very much success he's pretty good yeah he's a pretty good quarterback Fields first college pass complete and it'll go for a first down to Lewis John Lewis, the speed demon from Port Arthur, Texas. Good, safe pass. Nice job by the coaching staff. Given Boy. Fields a... Uh and he stood in there until the very last second and, and took the hit from Simon. He just got blown up, but showed tremendous poise and confidence in the pocket, held it to the last minute, and delivered the ball with great accuracy. Showing blitz, they come with it, and Bell makes a man miss in the hole. Good job because Amon Simon was that man. Well, I think you'll see Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M, get very, very aggressive with his pressure packages because he has a young, inexperienced quarterback. He's going to give him multiple looks. He'll show some things and then not do it. He won't show things and then come with the zone blitz. He's going to try to confuse the, the young man, put the element of doubt in Fields' mind. Second and six, Fields. Has a man, and it's complete. Rashawn Woods, he hung in there and made another great strike. You know, a lot of times the best way to get your feet wet at the next level is not have a whole week to think about it. You have to come off the bench and just play. You know, you don't you don't all week long say if they do this, I have to do that and overthink it. You just line up and you played the position all through high school and you say, hey, I'm just gonna take the snap and throw the football in. Mike Hankwitz is is, is gonna desperately try to confuse him, but right now Fields is showing plenty of composure at the line of scrimmage and in the pocket. Flip side of the 50, plus 44-yard line, first and 10 for the Cowboys. Here's Bell on the edge. And Bell will rumble to the 25-yard line. I like the design of that play. First and 10 again, Oklahoma State. Nice, nice little counter play right there, Drew. Excellent little counter action. All the run starts, run action starts one way, and then fake pitch the other way. Free the linebackers you get a man with great speed in the open field and he gains nice positive yards Tatum Bell can really run nice nice conception of the play there and good execution here comes the crowd at Kyle Field Bell trying to cut it back and Rocky Bernard at penetration again no gain Tatum Bell is a guy that was widely recruited the Aggies tried to get him to come here to College Station Drew, he's one of those guys that when he hits the hole going full bore, he's got the ability to go to the, go to the house at any time. Maybe not the most clever, make a guy miss, cutback type of guy. Rocky Bernard's not going to give him those cutback lanes. And Rocky Bernard is a guy that we're going to be watching this entire football game coming back from the knee injury that he tragically had last season. Fields with time, and it is complete. Did he get his foot down? No, they say out of bounds. It's a hold anyway, Drew, to be coming back. There's there's a hold on Russell from Oklahoma State in the, in the Oklahoma State backfield in, in desperately trying to protect his quarterback fields. No matter what the call is, I think it's coming back because of a holding penalty. 
Mike Denard, the fullback, made the catch and a long discussion taking place downfield. Our referee today is John Bible. There's the hold on Oklahoma State that nullifies if it was a catch or not. Remember, in college football, all you have to do is get one foot in bounds with possession. Now, the hold is going to occur right here. This is who they're going to call on the hold, the grab of the jersey, and that's the hold. Now let's see if the catch is made. Boy, tremendous. Oh, that's a good catch. Got both feet in with possession of the football. But his foot was out of bounds. He can't be the first guy to come back in the field to play and touch the football. So his route took him on the white, on the chalk, and he came back in the field to play to catch the ball. The pass was incomplete. We have a holding penalty on the offense. That penalty has been declined. It'll be third. Look at this effort, though, by Denard. Denard's feet are on. He, he stepped out of bounds, and then he goes airborne, gets both feet inbounds. But once that's the that's the mark right there of him stepping out of bounds. Not it's not a penalty flag. It's the beanbag. He stepped out of bounds. He cannot be the first player back into the field of play to touch the football. He's ineligible at that point to make the catch. But the holding penalty penalty nullified the whole thing anyway. Fields trying to change the play. Not easy to do. Not in this setting. Bell on a draw. Right. And he's going to get the first down. And Bell. Bell to the five. A flag comes in downfield at the 10-yard line. It came in late. They caught Willie Young for holding, I think. The wide receiver for the Oklahoma State Cowboys on the edge. I think they got him as he was giving Tatum Bell the perimeter of the edge. But you can see the explosiveness that Tatum Bell possesses. The ability to make a seven-yard run, a 77-yard touchdown run. He's got that type of skill. Well, John Bible said it remained second down, but it was third down on the, on the previous play. And, and the penalty is walked off from the spot of the infraction. It happened right about the, the nine-yard line. So it goes back to the 19-yard line and becomes third and four because the hold occurred well past the line of scrimmage down the football field as he was taking it to the house. Tim Burrows in as the single setback. Option look. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Burrow didn't get on the football, and the Aggies come up with it. And Seven that time. And that cost Oklahoma State an opportunity at least for a field goal attempt. And you're right, seventh time they put it on the ground this year, and they've lost every one of them. Lost all the fumbles. And, and that was a big key to the football game. No turnovers, no self-destruction. And when you turn it over in the red zone, that's a very, very, very bitter turnover. Just a little bit too far. Leading his back with the pitch. Seemed to be catchable. Burrow couldn't get two hands on it. Fields very disappointed. He executed a nice drive. Unfortunately, it ended in a fumble giveaway. Texas A&M in business at the 26. Farris out of the gun. And Farris going deep for Goins. It's complete. Oh, and he lost it. Yeah. He had it and lost it. Call, uh, they, they look for consistency out of Goins. And that's what they concerned about. He's got tremendous foot speed. He can separate from anyone. Ball is right on the money. Ferris could not throw the ball any better than that. I mean, if you walked down and dropped it on his shoulder, he couldn't throw any better. Great coverage, but a tremendous throw. Just could not quite finalize, make the catch. But, boy, that ball was accurate. And that's his strength, his accuracy and anticipation and accountability. Yep. The De three A's. Yeah, Dino Babers, the offensive coordinator for the Aggies, said he's one of the most accurate guys that have ever been around. I think that's the most important attribute for a quarterback. Big opening. For Joseph, he'll have a first down. Check to Oshler Fleming. And 12 yards on Fleming's first toe of the day. He's a sophomore from Denton, Texas. Well, Coach Babers wants to get the running game going to take the pressure off the young wide receivers. When the offensive line sustains blocks like that, you're going to get the running game going. Nice crease formed. Executed well. All phases. Fleming averaging over six yards a lug at this point. That works. That'll do it. 
Trips to the top on first and ten. Good catch by Ferris, and now he's got to unload it. Yeah, it's intentional grounding. Yeah, he can't was, throw it away in the pocket to avoid a sack. Yeah, he was in the tackle box still. Kareem Smith had him wrapped up. He didn't get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. It was intentional no grounding on the offense. The quarterback was in the pocket when he grounded the football. And you got to get it back. Penalty is loss of down is a spot of a foul. That's a, you lose the dip, the uh, the down as well as the the yardage. No one nowhere to throw the football. He's not outside the tackle tight end box. And he doesn't get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. He's saying that he was trying to get the ball to this area. When Ferris was talking to the official, said there was somebody in the area. I was trying to get it there, but as I was getting hit, it rerouted my throw a little bit. The official didn't buy it. Intentional grounding. So he lost uh, his first uh, case as a litigator. That's exactly. He wants to be quarterback in the National Football League eventually anyway, doesn't he? I think so. Second and 21. And here's a shuttle to Fleming. Good reaction by Oklahoma State. 45. Again, is Greg Richmond. Well, he made a lot of plays already. That was a very, very nice play. Consistent play for Texas A&M a couple of weeks ago against Wyoming. They executed that play to perfection more than once. Oklahoma State has remedied it in the, in the course of their film study. Here's what we're going to do. We're taking that play away, and they have. Very solid up the middle so far. Oklahoma State has presented itself to be defensively. Yeah, they say we have no superstars, no but we move around pretty well. They'll throw it in the flat in third and long, and Fleming nearly broke that tackle, but he's dropped it to 33. He's going to be about 13, 14 yards shy of where he needs to get. Dwayne Levels credit for the tackle, and Oklahoma State has held Texas A&M to 45 yards of total offense. They have 72, but they trail on the scoreboard here in College Station 7 to nothing. Both defenses have done a great job of getting the respective offenses off schedule. Tackle for loss on the early downs, making it third and double digits. Third and 10, 11, 12, those are tough conversions. Terrence Davis, Bryant back, nearly blocked. And TD, as he's known, makes the catch. And stays on his feet, out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Seven to nothing, Aggies, we're back in a moment. What a marvelous, marvelous sight. Red, white, and blue throughout. They sold more than 70,000 red, white, and blue t-shirts at five bucks a pop. Obviously, all the proceeds going to the victims and assorted charities in New York and Washington. And look at this. Also, Poe guy, Man. after negative x-rays on his left arm, is back in at quarterback. He wants to compete now. He said one of his great attributes is his toughness, and he throws it to Denard in the flat, and he'll pound to the 40-yard line in the first down as Sammy Davis combined with Brian Gamble for the tackle. I'll tell you what, Josh Fields had to give an injection of confidence to the offensive unit, the first team. And, and the coaching staff. You know, he answered the question. If Poe guy goes down for a short period of time or, God forbid, a long period of time, what do we have? Fields showed that they have something. That composure. Poe guy brings it down and now throws it wide at Denard. And Christian Rodriguez was right there in coverage. It'll be second and ten. What an impressive young guy he is. We talked to him for a while yesterday. He talked about a 19, 20 year old kid who's got his act together. Yeah, he, he really is. He's a great leader. And you, you look at the size of, of Poe guy. I mean, Poe guy is is a Poe guy's a, a guy that uh, is built like a linebacker at the quarterback position. Very, very big, physical, strong, tough guy, obviously. Shook that injury off to the left arm or left shoulder, wherever the injury may have been bothering him. He's, he's back in the, in the fray. You heal quick when you're young. Here's Milosevic, the tight end. And he'll be about three or four yards short of a first down. Terrence Keel involved in the tackle along with Brian Gamble. You know, Drew, the thing is... Look, as we look at some scores, Florida up on Kentucky early on, and Oklahoma's got the week off. But you look, you look at uh, Nebraska. That was Thursday night, all over Rice in their makeup game. A couch, uh, Crouch, I should say, threw for three and rushed for two. And Texas and Houston uh, take battle a little bit later tonight. You know, you look at they're going toe to toe with Texas A&M. It's self destruction. The, the, the unsuccessful fake punt and the fumble. I mean, if they if they take care of their own business, Oklahoma State, it's no worse than a tie ball game right now. 
Old guy just beats the play clock. And he had Woods open, but he had to throw it off his back foot on third and four. He's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. It's really an interesting game. And let's... We, we can't obviously forget the circumstances, never will, of last week, but football teams going through two weeks of, of being idle, and sometimes you're a little rusty getting back, and maybe we're seeing that on offense, Dave. Yeah, and I think both defenses are playing at a high level as well. I think it's a combination. I agree. Elder gets it away, and he hammers this thing over Gentry's head and into the end zone, a punt of 54 yards. That of 34, of course. Lapham, Jim Knox from College Station, Texas, sold out Kyle Field. The Aggies leading 7-0, 838 to go in the second quarter next week on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week. We'll see fourth-ranked Nebraska. They'll be in Columbia, Missouri. Eric Crouch and that man Darren Dietrich. 12.30 in the east, 9.30 out west. Nebraska rolled over Rice on Thursday night, 48 to three. And the touchdown maker, Crouch, had five. Threw for three and ran for two. That's a night. That's pretty good. Yeah. Joseph, nice cut. And then he hammers into Chris Massey. Three or four yards on first down for Joseph. You know, the thing I like about Joseph, Drew, is he's tall. He's a bigger back. He's 6'2", but he doesn't run upright. He's got a nice body lean. Every time he's close to impact, He's got a lean, and he's got his pad level down. You know what? He's so good that they moved Joe Weber to fullback, and Richard Whitaker, who was the top runner from a year ago, they made a wide receiver last week. Yeah, that's uh, that's saying something for this young man's talents. He's a, a great Big 12 back, the big physical type that can take the pounding. And Taylor breaking tackles, getting the 31-yard line. The transfer from Notre Dame, having people bounce off him. Well, the coaching staff said this is the most physical receiver Texas A&M has. And he does it all. Runs a little pivot route. Runs a nice route. Little play action pass. And he runs the nice route. Now breaks one tackle. Breaks another tackle. Third man breaks the tackle. Took four people to bring him down. He broke three tackles on one little run after catch. That's pretty impressive. Weber is now in a single setback as a flag comes in. He goes down in the backfield. Jake Reif, 42, was the one who got penetration, and there was also a hold on the Aggies. When in a game that's dominated by defense like this one has been, any mistake becomes monumental. Oklahoma State has made two large mistakes, and as a result, holding, they're down some. The offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, remains first down. Marcy Slocum was telling us yesterday, even though they have produced 440 plus yards a game and winning two football games, he doesn't feel that they've had the consistency they need as they get into the Big 12 Conference, and so far you understand what he's talking about. I like the fact that the coaching staff, R.C. Slocum and his staff, are wearing the red, white, and blue jersey, uh, T-shirts as well. They were part of this patriotic display here, along with the fans in the stands. Bet. Farris, uh -oh. and it's going to be picked off. Robinson to the 10-yard line. Went off De La Torre's hands. A catchable football off of De La Torre's hands, and Robinson comes up with it. They, they basically even up the turnover situation. Now, short field, they're in the red zone. Ferris dumps the football off to De La Torre. Catchable football right through his hands. And Robinson says, thank you. I'm going to try to take this to the house. De La Torre lets it get in, into his body again, bounces off his face mask through his hands, and Robinson almost takes it to the house. Now the Texas A&M defensive football team needs to rise up and make a stand here or Oklahoma State ties this up. First and goal at the 10 off the 16-yard return by Terrence Robinson. 
They'll run the football with Bell. He gets a block on the edge, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Cowboys. I'll tell you what, you get a fullback that is just one heck of a football player, and Denard made a great block for his tailback, Bell. He makes Bell a better football player. He makes that two-back set work. That's a true fullback. De La Torre, a little bit disappointed, to say the least. That, uh, that his his drop or incompletion gave Oklahoma State an opportunity to tie the football game. And one snap in the red zone is all it took for a touchdown. Luke Phillips will knock it through 7-7 seven, seven with 7-13 seven, to go in the second quarter. Tatum Bell gets into the end zone from 10 yards away. 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Comfort Inns. It's more than a room, it's comfort. The George Bush Presidential Library on campus here at Texas A&M University. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox. Thrilled you're along with us this afternoon. Oklahoma State has just scored Tatum Bell his second touchdown of the year. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. So both teams have scored after being provided with a short field. There's Sammy Davis back around his own goal line. Gentry, however, has it two yards deep. And Gentry tackled from behind at the 27-yard line. Otherwise, he's going to get a bunch. Chris Gray, backup cornerback, makes the play. You know, let's take a look at uh, Tatum Bell's touchdown again. Watch the fullback, Denard. You know, the fullbacks are supposed to run. They're supposed to catch. But this is what they're supposed to do the most, block. He takes the, the run support off its feet. And Tatum Bell gets the edge, takes to the end zone. Now, not only do you, do you make contact, but when you eliminate the player, take him right to the turf. That's Davis. Take him right to the turf. It's like make that spare. The pin is down. Not a factor anymore. Toss sweep, Fleming. He's had a couple of very productive carries. That one nets eight yards. Back up by Rickland Holmes. Well, we talked to uh, the coaching staffs the last couple of days, and both staffs, Oklahoma State raves about Mike Denard being a very complete player, Mike Gundy, the offensive coordinator. Then you go over to Texas A&M, and they say, boy, they got a fullback that does everything. Yeah, and, and he was a, a heck of a high school baseball player as well, so a tremendous athlete. This young man runs it out of the fullback spot as well as anybody in the country. Ferris on a counter, and Fleming hammers it in there. He'll be close to a first down. Got a couple of yards. Kevin Williams bottled things up in the middle. Also, Llewellyn Brown. You know, when you uh, talk about defense, just like in baseball, you want to be strong up the middle. Catcher, shortstop, and center field. Well, you know, Williams is the catcher in the inside at defensive tackle. He plugs it up. Then you have a couple of great linebackers, Robinson and Levels in the middle. Then you go back to the safety spot, Elbert Craig. I mean, you, you, you're very strong up the middle defensively, and if you can be stout in the middle and make teams work to the edges on you, you have a chance. And Oklahoma State is, is making uh, Texas A&M do that very thing. As a measure, Bill Clay is a defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State. Oh, uh -oh. we got a broken chain. I've never seen that before. How about that? Chain disassembly. <laughs> and what do you do? You glue it back together? You get the pliers out, Dave. There you go. Well, you fix it quick. They did it. So it's uh, third down and about a foot. But Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator, one of his philosophies is get fast people on the field. And that's why he plays with two linebackers. And he's taken some DBs and made them linebackers and some linebackers and made them defensive ends. Right, and, and he did that mostly to get speed on the edge because he knows he's stout up the middle. We just talked about being stout up the middle. Then what you have to do to defend the edge is get speed, and that's what he did as well. Farris will take it himself, and it looks like he got enough. When you have an All-American center and you have, you know, just a couple of chain links to go, you want to take the snap and cozy up right behind him. And McKinney is an All-American center. This guy power cleans 402 pounds. Now, what I mean by power clean is the bar starts on the ground, and in one movement, he takes it up to his chin and uses, I mean, uses your whole body, your, your legs, your back, overall body strength. That's a phenomenal lift right there. What you're saying is if you need to move a lot of furniture, he's your man. Yeah, Fleming, he gasses to the 50-yard line. 
He's got some quicks. He hits the hole in a hurry. Taken down by Elbert Craig. 12 yards there, and another first down for the Aggies. Nice execution by Texas A&M's offensive line. The old Connor, the backside lineman pulling, getting their blocks. Everybody's covered up. Nice job by Mahan at the position, turning up the football field and engulfing a linebacker. Nice job by the, by the big boys up front. Murphy and Goins come to the near side. Jamar Taylor up top. And Ferris gets it complete to Murphy. Yep. Yep. On a hop, yep. they'll say. No, Murphy's a former quarterback. So Murphy, I think it's always an advantage to when you make that move to the receiver position. If you played quarterback, I think that's a huge plus. I think it's a tougher move for Whitaker to go from running back to the receiver than it is for Murphy to go from quarterback to receiver in terms of overall understanding what the quarterback's looking for. And Murphy runs a little hook. Pivots it to the sideline. The ball's just a little bit short. Had to throw it low and outside, though, because the coverage was so good. If Ferris didn't throw it that far low and outside, it may have been picked off. Second and ten. Ferris will give to Fleming again. What a play by Greg Richmond. He came from the other side of the field as a flag comes in and makes the play at about the other tackle level right at the line of scrimmage. And holding again on Texas A&M is going to knock them backwards, get them off schedule. It'll be second and 20. And, and I'll, I'll well, tell one you, guy they didn't hold was Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> Ferris looked like he bobbled that snap a little bit. It looked like it was mistimed to me. I'm not sure Ferris got the shotgun snap cleanly before he handed that football off. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. There's been a lot of second and third and longs. Defense has been the story the first half in this football game. Both sides, both football teams, defenses have really risen up today. You can see that the, the penalties have been averaging nine yards almost for Oklahoma State, 10 yards per penalty for Texas A&M. They've been of the large variety, holding and such. Oklahoma State brings four, Ferris, all kinds of time, and a nice catch, but the true freshman, Murphy, was out of bounds, so it'll be third and 20, and on third and 20, the playbook gets awful thin. No question about that. That's why you, you were hopeful of maybe picking up some of the yards on second down. You know, make it third and 10, third and eight, but when it's incomplete and you're staring at a third and 20, very, very tough conversion. And the Aggies, that last conversion they had on third and a foot, that was their first conversion all day on third down. They're one of six. Wow. And they, that's the reason it was their first conversion. It was third and a foot instead of third and 20. Cowboys drop eight. Ferris throws oh. underneath, and Goins drops the football yeah. at the 46-yard line, his second drop of the day. And he was trying to run with the football before he caught it. The first thing you have to do is secure the pig and then run with the ball. Secure the pig first. Don't let it eat you up in the body. Get your hands out there, catch it. He was already turning his head, trying to determine what he was going to do for his first move before he had the football firmly in hand. Can't take your eyes off it. Cody Skates has averaged more than 50 yards of punt today. T.D. Bryant back at his own 17. Ooh, Shank. Not this time. This won't go 50. Wow. And it had backspin on it. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line. So Oklahoma State will get great field position after a 14-yard punt. Uh, the normally very reliable Cody Skates. Let's take a look at the top... 20 or at least the top 10 in the Associated Press. Look at this day. 3, 4, 5. Oklahoma, the defending national champs, Nebraska, Texas, all out of the Big 12. And Kansas State played one football game. They're right there at number 12. And I'll tell you a team that might break in. That's Colorado pretty soon. And Texas A&M was getting votes in the, in the 30 to 40 area in the polls that I had seen. Denard and Bell in the eye. Pogai 
after on a post route. Oh, almost. Nearly a great catch by John Lewis. The ball was there. Jay Brooks in coverage with Sean Weston. Well, Lewis definitely sold out. I mean, he gave every effort that he had to make the play. Almost a big play for Oklahoma State. That, that's almost like the philosophy there was, okay, bad punt, almost like a turnover. You got great field position. Go for the big one right away. Really stunned. And uh, maybe they're down a little bit after not having a successful effort in the kicking game. And Oklahoma State went right after it over the top. Aggies show blitz. And they come with it, and they hand off to Bell, looking for a crease. And he takes a pretty good lick from Wes Bodovich after three or four, maybe five yards on the play. Bodovich, a former quarterback at Texas A&M Kingsville, who transferred. And gets a lot of time on the field in special teams and as a nickel. I think more than once about run blitzing Bell too much because if you're not successful and he finds a crease, he's got the speed to say, I'm out of here. You know, your linebackers aren't there anymore. I'm past the second level. I'm going to make one guy miss and, and, and take it the distance. I mean, he's a threat, so it, you have to factor that in. Third and five. Pogai's in trouble, and he throws it into the ground. Bell was on the ground there. The crowd wanted an intentional grounding. And no flags yet. Well, the, the closest receiver was Vandrell, the, the guard. <laughs> Vandrell, he was smart because your instinct is to catch it. And he didn't. He didn't stick his hands out and catch it. But the official dropped his hat. And, and I, I think he's trying. And then now the flag comes in. So he wasn't sure about calling the intentional grounding or not. Dropped the lid. And then the flag followed. <laughs> and he'll put the hat back on. Intentional grounding on the offense. Quarterback grounding the pass from the pocket. No eligible receiver in the area. Now there, there's the lost it down at the start of the foul. Here's the lineman and there's the screen. Now, now you have a quarterback in trouble. And he just throws the ball right into the turf. Now you, what you have to do is is get it closer to your back. You know, in the NFL, you have to hit the back. You have to hit the receiver somewhere. Hit him in the foot, hit him in the butt, hit him in the arm. And, and they felt that he was throwing the ball into the dirt to avoid the sack. I, I think it's a good call. Elder will punt it. Dewan Gentry at the 15. Wow. Another beautiful punt Man. from Elder. And Gentry fields it at the six and is unceremoniously dumped by Darren Williams. A 54-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Williams did not invade the halo that time. No, he didn't. He looked like a rodeo guy right there. I mean, that was taking the taking the uh, bull to steer down to the turf. Big yeah, time. He'll make the short go with uh, a move like that. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Knoxy. Okay, thanks, Drew. Coming up on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. More with Texas A&M and Oklahoma State University is how they're dealing with last week's tragedy. We'll also take a look at the Big 12 scoreboard and the Aggie band plays God Bless America. That's coming your way on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. All right, Jim, thanks much. Red, white, and blue. The colors and, of course, the thoughts throughout our great land. First and ten for the Aggies at their own six. Fleming, look at this. Out to the 15, 16-yard line. Boy, has he looked good. He has. He gives him a nice change of pace. A little you know, bit quicker than Joseph, not right. quite as big. Texas A&M was averaging three and a half yards per snap on first down. And that had been getting them into a little bit of trouble. Not, not good enough. They've been too inconsistent on first down. That particular snap, they picked up about eight. Second and two is a lot easier than second and ten. Inside 250 to go when this ball snapped in the first half. 7-7 football game. Fleming will try again. And this time he's tripped up by Robinson in the backfield. He'll lose a yard. It'll be third and three. And this is a big down here. Because if Oklahoma State can get the stop, they figure to get very good field position with plenty of clock. AM one of seven right now on third down, Drew. And this and this might be their biggest third down opportunity of the day because if they don't convert here, Oklahoma State will have decent field position. Nice, nice completion percentage, but not many yards there. Yeah, 14 attempts, but only two and a half yards in attempt. 
They'll go on the ground, and Fleming gets great blocking at the point of attack. I mean, they absolutely knocked people five yards off the ball. Delatore yep. was involved, the tight end. He really was. I mean, he, he not only, you know, tight end, you like to get the edge. He not only secured the edge, he established it down the field five yards like you described, Drew. He not only got the outside position, but he knocked his, his man off the line of scrimmage to the point where it was a no contest on the short yardage play. Also, Michael Mahan had a great block, the left tackle. Farris will throw it, and look at this, Goins, who's dropped a couple, makes a circus grab for a three-yard gain at the 25-yard line. I like that move by Farris. Give Goins some confidence. Mm -hmm. There's Mark Farris. He's a junior, but he's 26 years of age. Played five years of minor league baseball. Last year, a school record 2,500 yards in the air. Barris throwing late, and Goins could not come up with that one. That would have been a very difficult grab. Elbert Craig had the coverage. You know, Oklahoma State's defensive game plan, Drew, was no easy throws down the middle. Make A&M throw it to the outside, and they've been successful. All of A&M's receptions have been to the sidelines, and, and there have not been missed tackles after reception of the football for the most part. So Oklahoma State's defensive game plan is being executed very, very well. Third and seven. The Cowboys blitz, double move on the outside, and Taylor makes the catch, but did he go out of bounds? No catch. They're saying he was out. You're right. Didn't have possession and one foot in. He ran the out and up, and as he turned up, it looked like he was running out of bounds in front of R.C. Slocum. Now that now there's discussion going on in front of R.C. It looks like one official is trying to overrule the other, and R.C. is saying, no, go with the initial call. I think R.C. is saying he was pushed out of bounds. The ruling on the field is that the pass receiver went out of bounds voluntarily and then came back in and caught the pass. That's illegal touching. Penalty is lost of down. That's exactly the play that happened earlier. I'll tell you what, John Bible's doing a nice job explaining some difficult calls today. Yes, he is. Remember Denard, that time, Taylor, did he, did, did, did he catch, he caught the football. Here is where he's being called out of bounds, voluntarily, not pushed out of bounds, but his route, when he ran his route, took him to the sideline. The catch is not the concern. The problem was 10 yards before the catch, during the course of his route, he hit the chalk. Once you step out of bounds, you can't be the first person to touch the ball once you come back into play. So Skates will punt it from about his own 15. And this is a very good punt. Bryant from the 30, trying to get to the wall. And he will not grab at the 31-yard line. 46-yard punt. Just a yard on the return. Dante Buell made the tackle on special teams. 55 seconds left and a couple of timeouts for Oklahoma State. Dave, you play coach for a moment. Well, I think with this field position, you give it a shot. You know, I, I, and you, you get a field goal kicker that's six for seven on the season. And, and he's, his only miss is from 50 yards. So if you feel that good about your kicking game, and you have, you have to negotiate about, oh, I, you know, I'd say about 40 yards in field position because you're at the 30-yard line to make it a safe opportunity. I'd take a shot at it. I wouldn't necessarily take a knee and, and, and go in and strategize for adjustments in the second half quite yet. And it looks like Les Miles concurs. He's got pull guy in the gun. Bell. And that didn't fool anybody. Most importantly, it did not fool Brian Gamble. Right inside the linebacker for the Aggies. Junior from Alto, Texas. 26th timeout. career start today. And the Oklahoma State Cowboys call timeout with 44 seconds to go in the half. So obviously, obviously they want to try to score. I mean, Les Miles is saying, I have confidence in Poe Guy in his decision-making process. And I don't think he's going to hurt me here. Let's call timeout and see if we can get something done. So they've got plenty of uh, weapons to get the football to. Poe Guy, Bell can go to the house at any time. And Poe Guy's got a, a myriad of receivers to throw the football to.
throws it wide of Rashawn Woods. And it'll be third down, 39 seconds left. That time AM rushed three and dropped eight. And they're not going to give Poe Guy any place to throw the football easily. When he looks down the football field, all he's going to see is maroon. They're not going to see much green. Open space. And the Aggies pitching a shutout on third down against the Cowboys today. Oklahoma State 0 for 6. They need the 41 yard line. Makes the catch, but he stopped short. Harold Robertson, 41, grabbed him immediately, and now the Aggies will call a timeout with seconds left. And if nothing else, one thing that gives him an opportunity is to block maybe get 21. Jay yeah, Brooks, absolutely, a chance to block one. And he blocked what four last year? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, and every every time he blocked one, it resulted in a touchdown for his football team. This is uh, Jay big play. Brooks and he's made a, a big name on special teams obviously and you know now Oklahoma State 0 for 7 on third down they're trying to decide what to do here on fourth down Les Miles has not run his uh, his unit his punt unit onto the football field totally yet talking about what to do and coming into today's football game Oklahoma State had only converted 18 and a half percent of the time on third down third down conversions had been a problem for the, the Cowboys already and they're 0 for so far today. Texas A&M has done a tremendous job. Yeah, that's it. He's at the line of scrimmage. Trying to make him jump. A&M better just not jump off sides. I don't think he's going to fool anybody. They called the timeout and all he's, all he's trying to do is get A&M to jump. I don't, that's right. I don't see Oklahoma State really running a play here. No. So they burn another punt the football. That, that wasn't a big element of surprise. No, I think the Aggies uh, hold their water. So another timeout. We'll step aside. 30 seconds left in the first half. Tied football game. Locking up front, allowing Yell to get away. And he gets a roll. Gentry from the 15. This is called the do it on your own because yeah. you have the uh, block set up. There's nobody downfield helping you out. That's right. 18 seconds left. Another good punt, 45 yards. Elders averaged 47 yards today. And he has a 54-yard punt for long skates. Is almost 44 yards. He's got a 62-yard punt to his credit. So the punters, the hidden yards, they've been dictating field position. And that's why the fake punt by Oklahoma State was so curious. Mark Farris is going to put a knee down here. Genuflecting. And get off to the locker room, 7-7. Seven, seven. In a first half dominated by defense and a couple of big plays setting up the lone scores for each school. 7-7 seven, seven, the score at halftime. The Aggies and Cowboys knotted up in the Big 12 conference opener for both schools. Tatum Bell has had his moments in the first half, including a 10-yard touchdown run. Let's go downstairs. Jim Knox. It's with R.C. Slocum. Jim? Thank you, Drew. Coach, uh, nice job in the first half with the defense. Offense, a tough time getting on track. What do you need to do here in the second half? We've just got to settle down and make some plays. Uh, we, we've been out of tempo a little bit offensively. We've had some drop balls, a couple of critical drop passes that would have been big plays. So, got to come back and make some catches and uh, keep playing good on defense. Our defense had the one, they had the turnover down there. It's the only score they've gotten. So, I think we're playing pretty good defense right now. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Drew? All right, thank you very much, Jim. Always calm, cool, and collected. R.C. Slocum, red, white, and blue. Our thoughts when we come back. The Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, 7-7 in College Station. Field in College Station, Texas A&M and Oklahoma State, all tied at halftime, 7 all. And hi again, everyone. I am Jim Knox. We do welcome you to the Sonic America. Proceeds go to the relief fund. And this afternoon, Kyle Field is decked out in red, white, and blue. This week, Southwestern Bell, instead of honoring the Big 12 Players of the Week, would like to honor all the rescue workers in New York and Washington as they continue to work around the clock. We're back with more right after this. War, the Vietnam War, 
in the Gulf War. Major General Ted Hopgood is presenting each man with a plaque. Governor Rick Perry right here also on hand, handing out plaques as well. Now in a moment, the Aggie Band will be playing God Bless America. Right now, let's head down on the field and listen in. Association has been the driving force behind this weekend's event. Howdy, sir. Yes, sir, I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks for your service. Thank you. Bobby, there you are. Howdy. How are you? Yes, sir. Congratulations. Just proud of you. Thank you, sir. In a moment, the Aggie Band will form USA and they will be playing God Bless America after the ceremony celebrating the 125th anniversary of the Texas Aggie Corps Cadets. In honor of the tragedy last week in New York and Washington, the fine Aggie band will be performing God Bless America. Aggie fans, of course, today decked out in red, white, and blue t-shirts. 70,000 red, white, and blue t-shirts on hand this afternoon raised $150,000 to those to the relief fund in New York. Right now, let's listen in to the Aggie Band. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you please join the Fighting Texas Aggie Band with their own rendition of God Bless America. Station, Texas, halftime winding down, 7-7 hour score. Let's check in with Jim Knox with Les Miles. All right, Coach, quite a game going on right now. Tied at 7, you got to be pleased where your team is right now, right? What do you do here in the second half in order to win the game? We just need to get our feet on the ground and play solid football because we have a great opportunity to win this game. Okay, okay? Oh, guys, fine. Okay. Appreciate it, Coach. Drew? Problem. All right, Jim, thanks very much. Les Miles in his first year as the head coach at Oklahoma State and back upstairs with Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman. Some big plays and some missed opportunities, really the story of that first half, Dave. Well, there's no question about it. Both defenses dominated to the point where any mistake that was made became critical. And here we have Elder trying to run on, on a punt, a fake punt. Came up about eight yards short, and as a result of the short field, Joseph takes it in for a touchdown. Oklahoma State benefits De La Torre can't catch the football. Richardson picks it off on the deflection, takes it to the 10-yard line. One play later, Bell takes it inside the pylon for the touchdown. Great block by his fullback Denard. Now Oklahoma State could have a lead in this football game, but they're in the red zone. Fields tries to pitch the football out. Tim Burrow fumbles the pitch and the option and Texas A&M averts disaster there. So really it's a case of who's going to make the plays and who's going to avoid the mistakes because the defenses are dominating this football game right now. Field position is going to be big in this football game. 
And we're ready to go. Oklahoma State will kick it off. You remember Texas A&M won the toss. They deferred, and Sammy Davis puts his knee down. And Oklahoma State elected to kick off, so that's why they're kicking off in both the first and second half. Look at the numbers from the first half, and what really jumps out at you, A&M comes in averaging almost 300 yards a game, throwing it. They have 39 yards in the air. Wow. And that's normally good. they have 440 yards in total offense. They're under 100 right now, so yep. give Oklahoma State a lot of credit, and obviously their numbers aren't real flashy offensively either. No, it's it's been a defensive battle. There's no question about it. First down, yards on first down are critical as well as field position. Let's see what both teams can get done in this half. And Oshler Fleming is the starting running back in the second half. There's some movement. He gets the football, and Fleming gets a couple before he's uh, taken down by Llewellyn Brown. And no flags came in, so it's uh, an advance of about four yards. One of the interesting things from... Uh, the category of insignificant. This is the third straight game for Texas A&M against the team nicknamed the Cowboys. Wyoming last week and uh, in week one, McNeese State. Not much there, a couple of yards. Kevin Williams in the middle makes the play. So it'll be third down and four. Also Greg Richmond around things, number 45. He's had a big day defensively for Oklahoma State. The Aggies two of nine on third down. Well, this one's a lot more handleable, Drew. A lot of those nine third down opportunities were third and eight, nine, ten and more. Third and four is more reasonable. Cowboys bring four, drop in coverage, Farris, wow. and it is through the hands of Terrence Thomas, who is open, and that's about the third or fourth drop from the Aggies today. Yeah, Ferris has been on the money really for a good part of the good part of the day. Finds a little slot, little opening in the zone between linebacker and safety. No, I'm not sure if he felt Craig bearing down on him or not, but got to catch that football. Even the interception against Ferris was not his fault. Bounces off De La Torre's hands. The quarterback gets blamed for an interception that really was due to inefficiency by the receiver. That's partially yeah. blocked. It's going to take uh, Aggie roll out to about the 46-yard line. Massey got a hand on it. Yeah, Chris Massey. Yeah. He's got the bad shoulder, but he stepped up big on that one. He was a parade All-American coming out of high school in the state of Oklahoma, one of the top recruits in recent memory for the Cowboys. Guy who's played some wide receiver and quarterback as well as strong safety, and he comes off the edge. Yes, he does. It actually ends up in the middle. Yeah, get, get, the, get the right hand on it coming up the middle a little bit in a short field. Only a 20-yard punt due to the deflection, or at least the hurry by Massey that messed up the mechanics of skates. And here, Oklahoma State has the short field at the 46-yard line. Also, Pogai left with a shoulder injury early in the game and came back after x-rays. Denard hurdling people gets to the 42-yard line. Penright will get credit for the tackle. Well, that's, that's that little fullback belly play that Texas A&M was so fearful of. And Denard has a nice feel for it. Let's take a look at the, at the scouting report. Ball security, of course, that, that fumble on the option was, was a negative, but not too bad. I mean, they have a takeaway as well. Crowd noise, they handled it pretty well. I mean, that's a plus. That was not a big factor. Red zone execution. The fumble was a problem. Touchdown's a plus. So they're, they're okay with their game plan. That's why they're in it in 7-7. Pogile throw on the run in the flat Denard. And he will be right at the stick. Sammy Davis spilled him. And this is a little bit different in college football. The last few years, the game has been dominated, obviously, by quarterbacks and also by tailbacks. You don't talk much about fullbacks, but this guy can handle the rock in addition to block. You know, Tom Rathman with the 49ers is the last guy that you can really remember fullback being a big, big integral part of an offense like this. Denard is like a Rathman in this offense. Now, Oklahoma State is not converted on third down yet, 0 for 7, but this one is just inches. And Pogai... Lays out the six-foot-four-inch frame, and he'll have a first down. 
Now, you have to take advantage of opportunities when they're presented. In a defensive struggle like this one is, field position becomes imperative, and when you do get the short field, you have to do something with it. Oklahoma State acutely aware of that, obviously. Les Miles knows for sure that this is the chance. Got to capitalize. Here's the sugar huddle going on by Oklahoma State. Look at all the communication going on between the offensive linemen and then the skilled people break to their respective spots in the formation. And a timeout called by Pogat. That was the first sound because as he called timeout, his tight end blew off the line of scrimmage, but the timeout was called. 7-7, early third quarter. Tied at 7, and a first and 10 situation for Oklahoma State from a plus 35-yard line. The wrecking crew defense, great tradition on that side of the ball. How about that? Neither offense getting much done against these defenses. They run a counter with Bell, and he smokes the hole across the 30 to the 29. He got six yards, and that's about what he averaged in the first half. Yeah, he really did. I mean, he, he was, uh, like, just under six yards a pop and carried the football 12 times. It showed the durability they're looking for. Did the offensive line get off the ball well? Left guard with a nice job of trapping and get, pulled out there and got the trap with the defensive end. But pretty good job at the point of attack as well. They increased AM's defensive front there well. 74 yards for Tatum Bell. He had a 100-yard effort in his last outing against Louisiana Tech. He gets another call, and he slips through the arms of Ty Warren. Not easy to do. And it'll be close to a first down. If he's short, again, it's one of those third down and very, very manageable. No doubt about it. In, in, in running the football, that's what they wanted to try to get established was that ground game a little bit. And uh, Oklahoma State, this is their second opportunity with a short field. First opportunity, they got it to 10-yard line. They scored in one play. And now after the deflected punt, they want to try to put points on the board in this situation because the team that takes advantage of the mistakes in a, in a tightly contested defensive struggle wins. Bernard runs in a Rocky Bernard. He's going to lose yardage. And now you have a decision if you're less miles. Yep. But his field goal kicker six for seven on the season, Drew. So he's going to give more consideration to maybe kicking the football and taking a lead. Denard injured. Denard limping off the field. And boy, if that's a serious injury, that would be very, very unfortunate. Nice surge at the line of scrimmage. Ty Warren got off the football very, very well. And then the play is finalized by Rocky Bernard. He just tackled for loss on a big third down. They end up losing a yard. Looks like they're going to go for it. They're going to bring in Wesley Bailey, another fullback. They're going to have to call timeout. This is too disheveled. The yeah, personnel that. group's all messed up. going to have to call time. Massey's in a quarterback, the option quarterback. Uh -oh. This uh -oh. does not look good. Uh -oh. And you were right, Dave. There's a flag down, however. That was a mess from the get-go. Is there 12 men on the field? I mean, they had personnel running on and off the field. Well, it's against Oklahoma State. Yeah. So the Aggies have held, and there was a great disorder. Should have called timeout there. If you're going to go for it, made the decision late, running personnel on and off the field late. Just really never had a chance uh, for success, I didn't think. Uh, timeout to regroup may have been the wise one there. But one of the things probably going through the minds of the Oklahoma State staff, they've already burned one timeout. You're in a tight football game. That would leave you one the rest of the way. Yeah, that's true. But it, 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 at, that, at that point... You blew a scoring opportunity. Yeah, you blew a scoring opportunity. I'm not sure, you know, hopefully you'll have another opportunity to take advantage of at the end of the game with those timeouts. Fleming next to Ferris, who's been in the shotgun almost exclusively in the game. Crowd wanted interference, yeah, and here's the flag. Yeah. Yep. Target battling with Cooper. Taylor comes up limping. Taylor running his route. He was pushed out of bounds. And he didn't, he didn't run out of bounds voluntarily. He was nudged. push. You see, he gets his head turned around to make a play on the football, but that right arm, Cooper's right arm is in there pushing pretty well. Taylor 
voluntarily not going out of bounds, although the ball, the trajectory of the ball took him out of bounds a little bit to try to make a play on it, but Cooper was definitely pushing. Six penalty on the game for Oklahoma State. Over 60 yards in, in yardage on those penalties. Ten yards per clip. Per penalty, I should say. Here comes a reverse to Goins. Tackled by Craig. Boy, Goins does have some wheels. Yeah, you hold your breath Man. if you're a defensive player when he gets the football. Oklahoma State reacted decently. Because I thought when Goins turned it up inside, he turned it up sooner than he wanted to. Oklahoma State had enough guys at home that played their defense responsibility. But when Goins turned it up and found a little crease, I thought he might take it further than he did. But I tell you, Oklahoma State's got some speed, Drew. They run around pretty well out there in pursuit. One of the things that really impressed R.C. Slocum in watching them on film, he said they're a fast defense. Farris on a quarterback draw, perhaps by design or perhaps not, gets two or three yards. And an injured, uh, that's Seth McKinney, isn't it? That's, that's, uh, no, that's, that's uh, De La Torre. That's De La Torre. He's yeah. playing with a bad shoulder and a bad wheel, and they are very thin at tight end. Yeah, it looks like he's that shoulder's bothering him. The way, he's, the way he's rolling that right arm around a little bit. Oh, you get, did he get poked in the eye? Looks like he got poked in the eye the way they're... Yeah, it looks like he just got poked in the eye, so he should be fine. So no tight end in the game right now. Four wides and one running back on second and seven. Ferris looks backside, finds a man. First down, 25-yard line. Well done by Terrence Murphy sliding with the catch and Farris surveyed the whole field. And the reason he was able to do that, Drew, is that the protection was outstanding. Nothing deep. No completions in the deep quadrants of the football field. Everything underneath or short. You know, he completed over 50% to the right side, but look at not very many yards, Drew. You know, uh, per attempt, yards per attempt was minimal. But that particular time, the protection was outstanding, and he got to the back side of his looks. He got to his third and fourth look and delivered a strike. Kudos to the old line for that one. That's complete to Taylor. This is the best-looking drive, really, of the football game for the Aggies. Solid gain on first down. It'll be second and five. They drew a collective breath when Oklahoma State could do nothing with the short football field. Didn't, uh, weren't able to execute on fourth down. Texas A&M realizes in a tightly contested game like this, when something like that occurs, you have to take advantage. You have to establish the momentum. got it back. Flags on the field. Was Oklahoma State lined up offside? I didn't see anybody jumping. Legal procedure. Boy, that might have been a double clutch snap. That's why the ball might have been fumbled by Ferris. You know, once you start snapping the football, you have to finish it. You can't start to snap it and then, and then complete it. I'm, I'm just guessing on that. But Ferris did not, did not uh, come up with a, the snap cleanly. Look, no, the snap was fine. There was no double clutch there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that. Uh, I'm, I'm really not sure that maybe they didn't have seven men on the line of scrimmage. On the offense, not enough players That's on the happened. line of scrimmage. Yep. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll peak second down. Now one of the receivers has to realize. Look at the side judge and say, "Am I up close enough to the line of scrimmage?" You got to have seven up there. They only had six. Well, now it's second and ten. For Texas A&M, 7-7 our score, 6.55 to go in the third quarter. Blitz coming, it's picked up. Farris dumps it, Goins makes the catch, and Greg Richmond tackles him about four yards short of the sticks. 
Well, Boy, Ferris has such great composure in the pocket, doesn't he? He really does. You know, he takes his work seriously. I think that's the biggest attribute that uh, Dino Babers, the offensive coordinator, you know, on, on top of the accuracy that he talked about, he said this is like working with a young NFL quarterback. He takes his job seriously. Well, he's accountable because he's married. He's got a six-year-old daughter. He has accountability every minute of to be a young NFL quarterback at 26. Yep. Here's a slip screen. Taylor oh. makes a good move. Good he can get in the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies. First touchdown of the career of Jamar Taylor in an Aggie uniform, the transfer from Notre Dame. Well, they caught Oklahoma State in the blitz, Drew. It was a perfect call. Running that little bubble screen when Oklahoma State was vacating at the linebacker level by blitzing, they caught him. And they had the right call in the right situation. And then a broken tackle by Taylor, and on the board he goes. Skates out of the West Bodovich hold, makes it 14-7 to with 6.06 to play in the third quarter. And Taylor's first college touchdown, the reaction from Mark Ferris. His third touchdown strike of the year. Seven, the Aggies have taken the lead. TD Bryant will haul it in two yards deep and come on out. And he takes a good pop at about the 22-yard line. First touchdown of Jamar Taylor's career. Never played for the Irish. He suffered a concussion in a biking accident and what? transferred to the Aggies. Watch Yates right here. Let's his man go in and then gets the hook block. They have a blitz off the slot. Defensive back. Perfect call. And then you'll see Taylor break a tackle of Holmes. Look at, look at the block right there. That's what I'm talking about. Yates breaks the tackle of Holmes. Touchdown. Tremendous effort by the left guard. And they caught Oklahoma State in the blitz off the slot. Denard, who hobbled off, is back in at fullback. Pogai is taken down, and a flag comes in. Rocky Bernard with the sack. Face mask? What's the, what's the flag about? He didn't He beat Jason Russell, Holden. and it might have been yeah. a hold, even though he made the play. Yeah. That's, that's ugly. When you're going to hold, don't let him hit your quarterback. <laughs> Penalty is declined. Second down. John Bible threw it right at the back of 52, Jason Russell, who was trying to block Rocky Bernard. Boy, well, and Bernard just with, with a nice, nice power rush off the edge. I mean, he just kind of, he shrunk the pocket. He just collapsed everything. Bernard is back. And uh, that's good news to the Texas A&M coaching staff's ears. He was a little tentative in the spring after that knee reconstruction, but he's full force right now. That's a big force, 6'3 and 290 pounds. The Aggies have him off schedule, second and 16. Pogai on the run again, and he's dropped back at the 12-yard line. This time, Ty Warren. Boy, just taking turns, the big boys up front. Nothing fancy, it's just bull rushing. It's just constricting the pocket by walking the offensive lineman right back into the quarterback's lap. Just, they're pinning their ears back and coming after the quarterback. They took the lead, and, and the energy of that offensive touchdown is carried over to the defensive side of the football. And on third and 21, if they stop them here, they figure to get great field position. Three sacks for the wrecking crew defense today. And Pogai calls a timeout, and now Oklahoma State has just one left. But I don't know if, you know what, he didn't get the timeout called because a flag is down, and I think it's a delay of game before the timeout was called. Well, that may bail him out because saving that timeout may be a factor. Delay of game on the offense, five-yard penalty, no timeout, no charge timeout. That may end up being a, being a plus when all is said and done because I don't think it matters right now. They'll probably run the same play that they were going to run anyway. Try to gain some yards. Give L a field position to, to get one of his howitzers off. The Aggies rush four. TD Bryant, and that's exactly what they do. They pick up a few to the 15-yard line. Bodovich along with Sammy Davis. Three Bryant. 
And here comes 80 plus thousand cheering on the wrecking crew defense. Well, every time you see that sight, red, white, and blue, definitely makes you proud to be an American. I'm telling you that. Gives you chills. It does. It really does. It's a great place to be this weekend. Elder. Good punt. Gentry wow. hit immediately. Wow. And now they're going to say halo in violation. Yeah. They waited for a moment. And it's almost as if the officials thought about it. And then a couple of flags flew. 48 yards on the punt. So you know what, Drew? I don't have a, I don't have a big problem taking that. Because if that kill guy misses, he's going to get more than five yards in the return. Only a five-yard penalty. That's a good so I'm, point. I'm saying, you know, it's not that big of a deal because if he misses, there's nobody else in the area. I, I actually thought it was pretty close. Ricklin yeah. Holmes kind of slowed up. You know, yards in the spot of the foul. See, the thing oh, is, Sarah. you give up five yards, but you might give up five yards in a turn anyway. But it makes the return guy worry about it the next time. Maybe he fumbles it. 7-14-7, our score. Seasons of the Big 12 Conference. Oklahoma State has opened conference play on the road. They're hanging tough with the Aggies in College Station. As we take a look at our Comfort In game summary, Mark Farris, the completion percentage, Dave, as you pointed out, is fine, but not a lot of yards against a very good Cowboy defense today. Look, neither team doing much on third down. One for ten for Oklahoma State. AM a mere three of eleven. That's solid D right there. Farmer is in at tailback, a true freshman, and he gets the call. And he'll get a yard or two before Michael Cooper knocks him off his feet. The impressive thing watching both of these defensive football teams, you don't see anybody off their feet. Nobody gets taken to the ground, allowing a cutback lane. Everybody's up and running, a little cramping going on. Whenever you grab the toe like that and bend the foot backwards, you have a cramp in the calf or the, or the hamstring, and reaching uh, back at that high calf area is Cooper. So it's very humid. The humans are hanging off the trees down here. You have to hydrate properly. You have to replenish the fluids. You had a pretty good lather going this morning uh, just walking to the car. And I'll tell you what, uh, that was a long walk for me. 30 or 40 feet. Exactly. That early in the morning? I got to get the engine turned over is tough. It's like uh, one, our good friend, our spotter, Chris Shaw. I asked him last time he jogged. He said, when I jogged off the field against West Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> There's Cooper uh, working his way off the field. Cramp relieving itself, but you got to get some fluids in right away because that cramp can come back and grab you again. And, and the, Ooh, look at that. You know what? You take, your game, pro, you know, you take your game program and it becomes a, a tool to create a little bit of breeze. Second down and nine. Farmer remains in the game with Joe Weber. And here's Weber with some room out of the flat. And he's going to get eight yards. Massey knocks him out. It'll be third and one. I forgot about Weber. He swung out of that backfield, and nobody from Oklahoma State made a move to cover him until he turned the ball up the football field. They had people in the area, but everybody was in soft coverage. Nobody had the underneath on Weber as he swung out of the backfield. Aggies have done a much better job on first and second down in this half because their third downs have, for the most part, been third and short. Absolutely. On third and one, here's Farmer, and the true freshman hammers it in there, and I don't short. know if he got there. I think he's a little short. Now, does R.C. Slocum decide to play field position, or does he hammer it up in there on fourth and short? I know he's got a lot of confidence in his defense, and, and that's what you have to think about. If it doesn't work out, will your defense be able to hold up? Not only think about a play to execute, but if it doesn't hold up, what happens? They're going to punt it. And he's going to play the field position game. He's got the touchdown lead, and he's going to try to pin you know, Oklahoma State back. I don't see a problem with it. You know what? I agree with what R.C. Slocum's doing here. It's never popular when you punt. Everybody uh, who's a fan playing with somebody else's chips always wants you to go on fourth down. But you're right, Dave. Play field position. You have a seven-point lead. Your defense has played very well. 
And Bryant, fair catch at the 14-yard line. 14 to 7, Texas A&M continues to lead. As we take a look at our sit go, you know me. I'm the only player in NCAA history to make two field goals over 60 yards in the same game. By the way, here's the little hint. Yeah. I did it barefoot. I bet it wasn't cold that day. And that's the thing I well, couldn't I couldn't figure out about those barefoot kickers when it was, you know, 30 degrees or less. It'd be like kicking a concrete block barefoot. It just doesn't make any sense to me anyhow. <laughs> why, why would it make, why would it feel good or provide better accuracy or strength kicking with a bare foot. Yeah, you, you, you like to feel that that leather right on your skin, I guess. Uh, not me. No, I don't. Not me. Poor guy out of the gun. And he had to throw it wide of Lewis because underneath was Terrence Keel, the strong safety. And Oklahoma State wanted to kind of stay away from Keel. A lot of respect for him. A good hitter and run support, and they feel like he's a factor in coverage as well. They wanted to try to run away from him and not throw the football in his area. Good football player. Poe guy less than 50%, and not even 50 yards passing yet. He set a freshman passing record at the school. You know, he's, he's more than capable. Yeah, his first two games as a starter last year, over 300 yards against Iowa State and Colorado. He'll dump it to Denard, and Jay Brooks reacts up quickly. Minimal gain there. It'll be third down. You know, Oklahoma State has done next to nothing offensively since the fourth down that really uh, went nowhere. It went for a loss on fourth and one in plus territory, and that has been the biggest momentum changer in this football game. And since then, Oklahoma State's been backed up. They haven't had field position favorable. Uh, uh, Texas A&M, after that fourth down failure, scored a touchdown, pinned Oklahoma State back in their own territory. They haven't gotten out since. Woods is flanked to the near side. They haven't gotten hit the football Whoa. much. Poe guy goes down again. Rodriguez at one end and Penwright, the other outside linebacker at the other end. Fourth sack of the game for the Aggies. When it's, oh, you get an offensive lineman for Oklahoma State on his backside at the 11-yard line. Is that Russell? But at any rate, when you have crowd noise, pass protection on the edge is, is tough. It's a problem because you don't have the only advantage, that being the snap count. The defensive players are getting off the line of scrimmage as quickly as you are, and they get the corner on you as a result of that. And both of them met at Pogai, met at the quarterback with that edge. As you can see right here, you get caught up in, in a pile. Down he goes. It's a big man to help off the field. Five, so R.C. Slocum apparently made the right decision. They're coming after it. They, they got block it. it. Bonovich blocked it. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Bonovich smothered it. And they'll have to unpile. We'll find out who came up with the football. It's Crutchfield. Eric Crutchfield, a backup defensive back, fell on it. Wes Bonovich smothered it. Boy, the kicking game, particularly the punt team for Oklahoma State, two critical errors today. Early in the football game, decide to run a fake punt with ill-advised field position. Unsuccessful, A&M scores. This time, a blocked punt. A&M scores. Two touchdowns off of miscues by Oklahoma State's punt team. Now how smart does R.C. Slocum look? Extra point there by Skates, 21-7. In a football game with very little offense, a two-touchdown lead now for the Aggies with 1.45 to go in the third quarter. The redshirt freshman, Crutchfield, with the touchdown. Just an amazing effort by Texas A&M. They're special teams. You know, that's always the uh, the third of the football game people take for granted. Take a look at where the where the pressure comes from. You know, so often in those situations, they the ball block, gets blocked out of the end zone. Block inside out. You have to block down. The wingman 
blocked outside. Bodovich came clean inside. You have to block inside out. You can't block outside in. The shortest distance to the punter is inside the straightest line. Not secure enough in the, in the punt protection for the punter. Touchdown as a result. Well, in Scott Elder's career, he's had five punts blocked. That's not his fault, obviously. You got to protect him, especially when you're punting into your own end zone. Bryant, five yards deep, puts a knee down. Now Oklahoma State at their own 20-yard line, down by two touchdowns. Can they regain the momentum they had early in the third quarter? Arsitko, we know you. Again, the only player to kick two from 60-plus in the same game, Tony Franklin. Had a nice career with the Philadelphia Eagles in the National Football League. Kicked many from long distance as well. Yeah, former Aggie. We saw, we saw a 67-yarder from uh, Martin Dramatica a few yes, years ago. Did. Remember that? Yes, we did. Kogai, quick throw. Rashawn Woods will have the first down to the 32-yard line. That's a guy that if they're going to come back from two scores down, I think has to be a factor. I agree. They have to get him involved, involved offensively. and Bell in the backfield. Bell hasn't had many touches in the second half. He gets one here. And he breaks a tackle. Keel actually was in the backfield, the strong safety, and he gets a couple of yards. Drew, let's take another look at the, at the block punt from a different perspective. Here's Bodovich. Wingman has to block him. He blocks out. Bodovich comes in untouched. You have to go inside out. Bodovich comes in clean and picks it right off of Elder's foot. Get a ricochet block. Take care of the inside, ricochet to the outside. Oklahoma State has been hurt by turnovers throughout the young season. And T.D. Bryant not going to be able to make a play on that. It's going to be third down and eight. And it looks like the Aggie secondary has really taken away most of the football field. And Kogai frequently has to just look in the flat. And now with a two-touchdown lead, the running game is not even a factor in AM's defensive mindset. Now it's tougher to throw the football. You're one-dimensional. You're throwing it because you have to, not because you want to. And that's light years different in terms of protection and execution. Aggies bring six. Pogai throwing for Lewis and Davis. Made him reroute. And Oklahoma State will punt the football back to Texas A&M. You look at the clock, 47 seconds left in the third. You don't have to completely, do you, Dave, abandon your game plan. You could still work Bell a little bit, can't you? Yeah, you, de you definitely do. But I think up front, I think they're just going to get off the football, get off the line of scrimmage and rush the passer with every first and second step and then react to the running game. I mean, their mindset is to pin their ears back and disrupt right now. They're coming again. Wow. And a bomb gotten away by... Elder back to the 12-yard line goes Dewan Gentry. Nice. Roger Bomback down on special teams. 54 yards on that punt by Elder. Other than the block. And he's had the opportunity to punt it. He's done a great job today. Again, the Big 12 championship game. Just being talked about to R.C. Slocum right now, saying, move him back or take the ball where it is. And R.C. saying, Elder is not going to do that twice in a row. Let's take him back and penalize him. John Bible in a moment will tell us about it. Personal foul covering a punt. That's highly unusual on the coverage team. Personal foul 
was, was on Newkirk that you see. Here's Newkirk working his blocking pattern. Then frustration. Oh, head slap to release. You can't hit up in the headgear. He was spied and, and, and found. Deacon Jones would have liked that play. That was nice. Gentry from the 35, trying to get to the wall. Good coverage. He'll get to the 40. And again, it's Roger Bombeck covering the punt. 44 yards on that punt. Picked Five up some on yards. the return. Picked up some yards due to the penalty, though. The field position much, much improved as a result of the personal foul. Less of a punt, and he had to do it from worse field position. No, 24 seconds left in the third quarter. If Oklahoma State is to stay somewhat in touch in this football game, they need to make some sort of play defensively. Better think takeaway. Farmer, two tight end situation, and Ferris will give to Farmer. And he runs it for about five yards to the 45-yard line. True freshman from Tyler. Texas. Now, that was a pretty good running back came out of Tyler, Texas yeah. way back. A guy by the name of Earl Campbell, the Tyler Rose. And if, uh, if he is anything like, not, not built like Earl Campbell, totally different. Well, he's built like Earl Campbell's physically. right thigh. Yeah, exactly. He's, uh, he wouldn't even be mini Earl. He would be, I don't know, just a... A, a shadow of Earl, I guess, but he's a good player. Clap him. I'm Drew Goodman. 21 to 7 as we begin the fourth quarter. Texas A&M leading. Special teams so key in the game of football, and today Texas A&M's made some big plays on special teams. Well, they really have, and it's it's who makes the mistakes and who takes advantage of the mistakes that have been made. Oklahoma State has made more mistakes. Texas A&M has taken advantage of those mistakes, and special teams has dictated field position and scoring plays as well. And Farmer picks up another five yards, and they'll move the chains for the Aggies. They wanted to redshirt, I think, initially Derek Farmer, but when they moved Richard Whitaker to wide receiver, left him really with only two running backs, Keith Joseph and Oshler Fleming. And so they're getting Farmer ready to go as an 18-year-old. And we haven't seen Joseph in a while. Shoulder. I wonder if it acted up a little bit, that slight separation. Run blitz coming. And despite the run blitz, five more yards on first down for Derek Farmer. Let's get an injury update from Jim Knox. Jim, what do you have? All right, Drew, it doesn't look like Jason Russell will be back in the game right now. Ice pack on the knee. They Early diagnosis, they say a bruised knee, but it doesn't look like he will be returning this afternoon. All right, Jim, thank you. 14.06 to go in the fourth quarter. The Aggies from the plus 45-yard line. Pretty good little shake at the line of scrimmage to find a seam for Farmer. He got four. Taken down by Massey. Farmer starting to plow a little field here early in his career. Offensive line doing a good job up front. They're starting to uh, establish themselves at the line of scrimmage in the second half of this football game. I think Oklahoma State is, is starting to wear down a little bit. The heat and the humidity are a factor. They've been on the football field a long time, particularly in this second half. I think they're starting to show signs of it. Plus, don't you as a player, you need something good to happen to yeah, you need your spirits regenerate lifted. the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spirit, as you say, and Farmer makes people miss. Bursts into the secondary, still going to the 28-yard line. Maybe a future star being born this afternoon at Kyle Field. 13 on the pickup. Derek Farmer. Watch the blitz, a blood cross. This is a run blitz, so Bill Clay has got to be a little bit upset because he called the right play, but just excellence by Farmer. He just makes people miss. I mean, he's got Rick, uh, Robinson blitzing linebacker right in the hole, and Farmer just... So it's not the defensive call. It was the execution by the players, and I think, once again, signs of fatigue. He made a miss in a phone booth. There wasn't a lot of space there. Farmer now the workhorse. Coe drops him after a couple of yards. Kansas State leading early 10 to nothing. The 
huge battle there later on. Ohio State, UCLA. We saw a pretty good running back, Foster, out of UCLA. He's a legitimate package. He may be as good as there is in college football at the running back spot. Yep. Weber showing his tailback skills. And the uh, former tailback, now fullback, gets a first down of the 17. This could be the old knockout punch being put together right now by the Aggies. Exactly. Really punching them off the line of scrimmage. Weber showing uh, an ability to make some cuts and then protecting the football. Coming into today's action, he'd only carried the ball 10 times and had scored four touchdowns. So he was the short yardage goal line guy and had been doing that well. Now he's back to fullback spot. Here's Farmer. Bouncing off of people, driving past Craig. Ball comes out late. And Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State says they have it at the four-yard line. Boy, Farmer just fighting and churning for extra yards. The ball's ripped out of there. And Oklahoma State comes up with a football. Beck. Kyle Beck. Yeah. Well, they're still alive. With 11.31 to go, Texas A&M was running it down Oklahoma State's throat. And Farmer coughs it up, trying to get an extra couple of yards. Yeah, it, it, the fumble on, on extra effort. No fumble is good, but a fumble due to giving it everything you've got is, I guess, a little bit more palatable. You can swallow it a little bit easier, but you're definitely in a scoring zone in the red zone. You don't want to give the ball off. Bell, tackled by Keel. Bernard got a piece of him as well, a couple of yards for Tatum Bell, who has 81 yards. Look at this. Wow. North Carolina, 34 to 9 over number six, Florida State. Florida State does not lose many games in the ACC. There is no question about that, but not losing, not just losing, being thumped. It's coming, it's picked up. Pogai gets it away. Flag comes in as Milosevic gets to the 10-yard line before like he's taken down by Mon Simon. If it could be a hold, it'll be half the distance to the goal. That's what it is. The goal of very good teams Mac Brown had at North Carolina. Right. But you always had to play the bridesmaid to Florida State. Florida State has just found themselves a very comfortable home in that conference and of course they do play the tough non-conference they'll, they'll play florida they'll play miami they'll play schools Holding of that caliber on the offense penalty is half the distance from the previous spot repeat second down yeah there's one one acc loss for, for the florida state seminoles this could be the second one and they've won geez i don't know over 50 well over 50 conference games at this point in time maybe even closer to that one loss, so it has been dominant. And I think the loss, as I recall, was to Virginia, I believe. I think you're right. Pogai will run a draw. Bell gets to the line of That's all. AM smelling blood right now. You know who's played a very good football game? 94, Ty Warren. Ty Warren is a, is a specimen. And to have Bernard back to compliment him is, is huge. You have those two big guys up front plugging, boy. Ty Warren is, uh, has got an NFL body, an NFL athletic ability with that body type. He's a junior from a couple of miles from here in Bryan, Texas. Poe guy runs option out of his end zone, and Bell... Will not have the first down. He does get it out to about the nine-yard line. Brian Gamble, Jay Brooks ran him out. And Scott Elder will have to punt again from his own end zone. Boy, gutsy call to run the option in the end zone like that. That's got turnover possibility written all over it, but they did execute. Take a look at it. Whole guy down the line of scrimmage. Has to make the sure pitch with the left hand. Boy, Bell does have wheels. He gets to the corner right now. Elder, six yards deep in his own end zone. Here comes AM again. And 
and this one is out of there and it drives Gentry back to about the 47 yard line. Actually this is uh, Mickey Jones. And the senior gets 10 yards on the return after a 43 yard punt. 21 7 the count in College Station. The Aggies on the 14. A special day at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. 82,601. Allison, Allison. An overflow and crowd. Fourth Please. largest Come ever on. at Kyle Field on, on a day of great emotion and, of course, great patriotism. Red in the top deck, white in the middle, and blue down closer to the field. Boy, proud to be an American? You bet. Aggies with 9.41 to play, lead 21-7. And they have it first and 10 from the 42-yard line of Oklahoma State. Oshler Fleming makes a subtle little move and gets about a yard before about eight white jerseys push him back, including Michael Cooper jumping over the top. And Michael Cooper jumps over the top and hurt his ankle. Yeah, he's cramping up again. I, I, he's the one that had the cramps earlier, and I think that uh, he's, he's suffering from the same problem. Can't get enough fluids in his body quickly enough. The Aggies trying to go to 3-0. and In most of the first three quarters, they threw the ball a bit more frequently than running it. But their last couple of possessions, they've had great success on the ground. Comes a run again. Fleming fires ahead to about the 35-yard line. Brought down by Marcus Jones. Fleming comes out. 21 to 7 the score. 7-7 at halftime. 14-0 third quarter. Special teams, Drew, huge. Yeah, and the best scoring opportunity actually early in this second half came from Oklahoma State, but they got uh, stuffed on a fourth and one play inside the Aggie 30-yard line. Farris heads to Farmer, and he's not going to get near the sticks on this third down play. Bomb back, and several others stuffed Farmer. I, levels there as well. I think that Oklahoma State, if they don't come out with a, a victory in this football game, which it looks tough to get accomplished at this stage, I think they still found out something about themselves today. They can they can go toe to toe with one of the better teams in the Big 12 Conference physically. Just can't make the big mistakes. You know they don't have that much of a margin for error at this point yet to make those kind of mistakes, but they can hang in there physically. Yep, fourth and two, Ferris to throw. And it's incomplete. Jamar Taylor, tough opportunity there. And they'll turn it over on downs. Let's revisit the scouting report today for Texas A&M. Well, they wanted to get their running game established. They did more so in the second half. First half, they struggled. Kicking game, they wanted to win that battle. And the block punt for a touchdown was monstrous. Big chunks of real estate. Hey, Oklahoma State was too tough for that. They only had two passes of over 15 yards. No rushes for more than 15 yards. So that uh, that goal was not accomplished. But special teams and, and, and strong defense has been the order of the day for the Aggies. Well, they have 18 straight winning seasons. So they're used to finding ways to win. problems Oklahoma State had. They try to fake punt early in the game. Jay Brooks makes a great play in the red zone. Run the option, fumble the football, lose the scoring opportunity. Fourth and short. Put in a new quarterback. Try the option unsuccessfully. Vodovich blocks a punt. I mean, all those plays, monsters. When you make plays like that, you add them up, and at the end of the year, you're always going to win more than you lose. Absolutely. Absolutely. And last year, by Texas A&M standards, a down year, they went 7-5, and five, went to the Independence Bowl. Ten bowl games in 12 years under R.C. Slocum. You, know, you look at R.C.'s uh, record at Kyle Field. 65 wins, seven losses in one time. 
almost 90 percent undefeated at home eight times during the course of his coaching career here. Pogai to T.D. Bryant. Bryant gets above the 40 to the 42 yard line. It'll be second and a couple. Terrence Keel made the tackle on Bryant. Junior from Houston, Oklahoma State, like most schools in the Big 12, recruit their own state, recruit Texas very heavily. Texas is, a, is a, just a, a cornucopia of talent for the country. I mean, they've got it all there. Made 300 Division I-A kids a year come out of the state of Texas. Tatum Bell, and he'll have enough for a first down. When you look at Oklahoma State, good defense. An exciting running back and a very good running back in that man, Tatum Bell. Yes. And a young quarterback who's big and steady. And you found out a little bit about the number two guy, Josh Fields, today. Yeah, I think that that's the other plus I think they take out of this football game, Drew, is Fields passed. You know, his first test under, under battle, he passed. It was two or three throwing the football. Here's a screen. Woods getting upfield. Wow. Still going to the 40-yard line. Sammy Davis eventually makes the tackle. Now, if Oklahoma State can complete this drive and somehow get in the end zone, there's still enough time. There's plenty of time to go. 6.21 left in a 14-point game. If they can score in a reasonable time frame, still have, say, four minutes on the clock in, in a one-score game, it's far from over. The Cowboys are still working. They haven't spit the bit. They're still, they're still working hard. Pogai wants that one back. He had T.D. Bryant, he short hopped him. Yeah, he, his mechanics were, were poor. Threw the football, falling away from the line of scrimmage without any reason to do so. The good news about that play is it didn't take long. Change in the play. The Aggies showing blitz. They come with it. Five coming. And Woods, the hot receiver, picks up about seven. So third down and three. Pretty good read by Pogai. Total offense in the second half. It's been all Texas A&M. Wow. Man. It's amazing that it's still only a two-score game when you look at that number. Oklahoma State got backed up. After their unsuccessful fourth down attempt, AM scored and, and Oklahoma State haven't been able to muster anything since. It's been domination by AM. They hand it to Bell, and he'll have the first down. I'll tell you what, for a guy that's known as a speed back, he's shown some toughness today between the tackles. I think that's another answer that has been given to the Oklahoma State coaching staff. They were concerned. Is he durable enough? Well, he thump it in there with regularity in the Big 12. And he certainly has done that. 5'11", 195 pounds, solidly built, and he's got, uh, he's got speed to burn, there's no doubt. Another screen set up to Woods, and the Aggies react very well. Gerard Penright got out in the flat, held that to a short gain. I like Woods' uh, ability to get in and out of cuts. Very precise route runner. Jay Brooks may be uh, cramping up also to see Woods go to the sideline. Right. He's coming off the field. Tough as it to check off with 82,000 people trying to prevent you to do so. There's Christian Rodriguez with a sack. Nowhere to throw the football. Cocked his arm. Nowhere to go when he brought it down. Over. Distant cousin to A-Rod. Yeah, and you know what? Here's a guy that made one of the biggest plays uh, anybody could make. He had a sack as a redshirt freshman against Florida State. For right. four years, he's known for that play. Against Chris Wanky. Against Chris Wanky. He says, you know what? I want to have a senior year. And I want people to come up to me and talk about something other than that play. This is determined field position as well. 
five quarterback sacks, none for the Cowboys. And now it's third and ten, and they run the option. Bell, nowhere to go because Bodovich came flying up from a safety spot. And now it's fourth down, and you got to figure with 4-12 to go, you have no choice right. but to go for it. Well, you two scores down, field goal does you no good. Even though you do have a, a place kicker that has gotten off to a nice start, tied for third most uh, field goals in the country, 6-7 in the first two games, he's not going to help you right now. You're going to pump the ball in the end zone. Fourth and 12 for Oklahoma State. the 19 on the slant wood wow. stretching i think he got it i think so too that final little twist of his body gave him the momentum drew that's exactly where he needed to get to where they've spotted the football and they won't even measure first down boy not only a great catch but what he does after the catch is extraordinary and he's working against Davis. Excellent cover man, had tremendous coverage, but Woods is a bigger body and just rolled off the Davis for the first down. He got seven catches, as you see today, 21 now on the season through three ball games. Bell trying to find a spot to run. Warren loses a helmet, but he doesn't care about that. He's gonna make the tackle. Yep. You know, this Oklahoma State football team is not more than talent. For a second, I thought he was going to play without the helmet the next down. He probably could. That, uh, that man is he stout. He, he looks the part. Yeah, he's, he's definitely, he passes the eyeball test. And then when he gets on the football field and controls the line of scrimmage, he's going to be the career leader or threaten to be the career leader tackles for loss by the time he's done, I think. Denard out of the backfield, so it'll be third down again with 3.08 to play. And you're talking about relatives, mentioning that uh, Christian Rodriguez and A-Rod are distant right. cousins. Well, Ty Warren's uncle, a little bit smaller than Ty, Curtis Dickey. Remember how fast he was? Now there's a guy that could run. Another great running back here at Texas A&M. Played a lot of years with the Colts yep. in the National Football League. Fastest players in the NFL. The Aggies oh, come with it. Poe guy somehow comes up with a football and gets it away. Out of bounds. Looking for John Lewis. Fourth down on the menu again for Oklahoma State. Boy, Poe guy did a good job of just salvaging. Nothing, because <laughs> it could have been a dramatic loss of yards. Ball snapped over his head. He gets it on a bounce, a clean bounce, one bounce right up into his waist, and that saved him. Gets out of pocket and throws it away. That guy showing some athletic ability there, but he got a very fortuitous bounce, to say the least. They need the nine-yard line on fourth down. Toward the end zone, and it is broken up. Woods couldn't come down with it. Double covered. Bodovich and Davis. And Oklahoma State is turned away, and with 2.55 to go, they can start celebrating officially in College Station. More than 82,000 in the house today, and they've seen, for the most part, a defensive battle. And when you talk about great defenses over the years, you always have to mention the wrecking crew defenses. And this one doesn't have the big name like a Dat win, but this is a pretty solid bunch as well. And they've given up one score today, and that was against a short field. Ferris goes down. Kevin Williams gets him. Boy, tremendous penetration by Kevin Williams. Take a look at the, this is the fourth down play. Had to get nine yards, ran a fade to the corner of the end zone, double coverage. Davis has got the outside. He knows he's got inside help from the safety, Bodovich, and both players are in position to make a play. 
With the timeout on the field, we'll do the same. 2.42 left, 21-7 Aggies. 21 to 7 the score. That is Cameron Ferris, the six year old daughter of Mark Ferris, who's 26. And you mentioned uh, married with a child. She is adorable, and she lost a tooth yeah. the other day. Yeah, the tooth fairy is very, very good. Look at it. You can see. Oh, move uh, your uh, hand, move your hand. Uh, oh, oh, you can see. Oh, there's a little spot where that tooth's missing. Right. And, and he said, you know, boy, when I was a kid, <laughs> he goes, I can get a whole lot from the tooth fairy. No. Times of Jane. Oshler Fleming's in at the tailback. Movement up front. Well, Seth McKinney caught guys in the in the neutral zone and snapped it. No, well, he asked Mark Ferris about <laughs> the tooth fairy yesterday and his daughter. When I was a kid growing up, I'd get 50 cents if I was lucky, and she gets ten dollars. She gets tooth fairy leaves little pieces of her clothes next to the door where she got it caught in the door. Gets doll outfits, dolls. So there's definitely some inflation going on. They say the economy's going bad, but she wouldn't know it by what our tooth fairy is like at our house. What, I'm getting some pliers and yanking some teeth and sending them <laughs> to Ferris. Hey, there you go. Man, that tooth fairy is strong. Yeah, she's adorable. She is a cutie, isn't she? Two and a half to go. Second and 15. The Aggies. They had to play 60 minutes today against Oklahoma State, and that has been the tradition of this matchup. Oklahoma State's going to go to 0-6 against Texas A&M since the Big 12 was formed. David Craig makes another tackle. Biggest surprise of the day around college football. Wow. Look at this. I mean, not even close. And Carolina had already lost this year to Texas and Oklahoma in the right. Big 12, and they thump Florida State. Well, congratulations to John Bunting, former Outside linebacker with the Philadelphia Eagles for many years, Dick Vermeil and others uh, coached him. He's the head coach at North Carolina now and cut his teeth against the Big 12 and got a huge, huge conference win by knocking off Florida State. I'm not just talking about beating them. I'm talking about dominating them. Man, that's just that's uncharted waters for Florida State. When was the last time somebody truly whipped Florida State? Oh, boy, I, I mean, mean both games points? included. That's, I mean, I think you have to go back a ways now, serious ways. Their last loss by 32 points or more. Gosh, I think you, you might have been, have to get it might in have the, the 1800s. <laughs> I wonder if Bobby, yeah, Bobby, Bobby probably lost in his early years down there. He probably lost by, you know, more than 30 points. But my goodness, it hasn't happened recently. No, but well, we have a moment. Our thank yous, they're big thank yous every week. The executive producer of college football is Bill Borson, coordinating producers Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. And today's game has always been produced by Bob Steinfeld. And Directed by Ken Miller. Our senior vice president of field operations is Andrea Berry. Tim Simmons running stats up in the booth. He's got his, he's, he's mid-season form. Always. Oh, Fleming will have a first down to the 30-yard line. That offensive line behind Seth McKinney. What a difference in the second half running the football. 51, Taylor Whitley is a 305-pounder, and there's McKinney. McKinney uh, is one of those guys that is the true definition of student-athlete. Academic All-American. He's going to have a master's degree in December. Look at this. Today, A&M 145 yards rushing coming in. Oklahoma had only be given up 33 yards a game, third best in the nation. Kansas an early lead in Colorado. It's the Iowa State after close one, leading big now against Ohio U. A couple more yards there. Next week, the Aggies have the Irish right here at Kyle Field. And Oklahoma State will begin a three-game homestand. Sounds like baseball. They'll have Northwestern State. That's a replacement game because last week their game with Northern Arizona, of course, was canceled. Then they'll have Missouri and Texas. It's going to be an emotional time for Bob Davey to come back to to College Station. He was the defensive coordinator of the wrecking crew for many years with R.C. Slocum. And still very good friends, so that's going to be an interesting battle next week as Notre Dame invades College Station. Inside a minute to play. Fleming gets the call again. This is the toughest yards to get for, for a running back when everyone in the building knows you're getting the football. You call it garbage time in basketball. I guess you can call it garbage time in football. Right. 
Mark Farris, another win, and you can talk about how accurate he is and how bright he is and what kind of leader he is, but ultimately, Dave, as you always point out, quarterbacks are judged by uh, wins and losses, just like pitchers. No, no question, he and, and he understands that totally. So this will be the third one on the correct side of the column. And Fleming, a couple of more, and that'll be the final snap of the game. On an emotional day at Kyle Field in front of the fourth largest crowd ever. The Corps Cadets come flying on the field. 21-7, the Aggies improve to 3-0 in front of the red, white, and blue. Les Miles' team drops to 1-2, but they played very, very well for most of the encounter. There's all, all kinds of traditions here, uh, pre-game, in-game, post-game, the cadets. I mean, they make it, this is the pageantry of college football. This is what it's all about, and it's good to see. You know, for the first game back, couldn't think of a more appropriate place to be than Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. Let's check in now with Jim Knox. Knoxie? All right, thank you, Drew. Coach, you got to be extremely pleased. Tied at 7 at halftime. Your team came out in the second half and really, really controlled the game. I thought our defense really played uh, pretty steady all the whole ball game. Uh, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot on offense several times there. I was disappointed we didn't get more points, but proud of the overall effort and good to be 3-0. Okay, you talked about the defense, and last week you challenged your defense to step up, and I think they rose to the challenge today. That, that was more like the wrecking crew today. Uh, we, we've had a great tradition of playing good defense here at a and I'm proud of that tradition. I told the players they owed it to all the guys who played here ahead of them to go out here and play with great effort and make things happen on defense. Now let me ask your thoughts coming out here today to Kyle Field, seeing the Aggie fans decked out in red, white, and blue. You're also in a red T-shirt. That had to be an unbelievable feeling. I never cease to be amazed at our students here at Texas A&M. We have the best students in America. I don't think there's any other place where the students could have come up with the idea and could have gotten this organized and done in a week's time. It's a great credit to our students in the Texas A&M and our alumni, our 12th man. All right, real quick, next week should be another outstanding atmosphere as Notre Dame comes into Kyle Field. This place will be wild. The house will be rocking next Saturday. All right, Coach, congratulations on the victory. Good luck next week. Drew? All right, Jim, one of the class acts in college football, R.C. Slocum. And uh, R.C. talked about the students. You know, they buy 30,000 season tickets. Th those are students. I tell you, they love their football down here. And, and obviously by what went on all day long today, they love the United States of America even more. And it's a tribute to all of them. That's what ultimately this day is all about. The Aggies win it 21 to 7. We'll be back to Kyle Field right after this. to seven is the final score on a special day in College Station, Texas. One of the stars of the game, Mark Farris, is with our Jim Knox. Jim? All right, thank you, Drew. Mark, nice performance today. Offense a little sluggish in the first half, but in the second half, you guys really dominated, especially on the ground, I thought. Yeah, we uh, once we got a lead, we wanted to establish our ground game, because we know to be a good team in the Big 12, you got to be able to run the ball, so that was important to us. We'd like to gotten a couple more touchdowns in there, but we're happy with the way we moved the ball in the second half. Were you frustrated at first, and what went on at halftime? Must have been a heck of a halftime talk by RC. Yeah, I mean, he really kind of got onto us. We got onto ourselves, you know, because we expect a lot of ourselves. And one that we played bad, we just kept shooting ourselves in the foot. And, uh, you know, we're just glad to get a win. Any win's good. But, you know, we know we need to play better. Now, of course, the offense, uh, it needs a little time to work. You guys had a couple of weeks off. But this is a situation where the more you work on it, the better you get. It seems like that. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, the two weeks off, you know, I probably had a little something to do. I think both teams were a little rusty at first. You know, the offense did move the ball well. Uh, I think once it got in the flow of the game, like you said, in the second half, we moved the ball a lot better. It seems like you have a number of guys who can run the football for you. Still trying to find a wide receiver that can step up? Yeah, you know, I'm happy with those guys. You know, uh, we had some plays we could have made today. I had some plays I could have made today. So, uh, like I said, we're just happy to get the win. We know we got a lot of things to work on. Bottom line is a win is a win, and you guys definitely Definitely got the job done. Next week, you get Notre Dame coming to your home field. That'll be a big one, you know. It's the second half of this game, once we got the lead, I, I'm not going to lie, you're kind of thinking about it, and it's in the back of your mind. So we're looking forward to it. It ought to be a neat atmosphere.
congratulations on the win. Drew? All right, Jim, thanks very much. And as well as uh, Farris performed today and others on offense, uh, this win goes to the defense led by Rocky Bernard. Yeah, I thought that uh, Texas A&M's front four dominated the football game. And, and Ty Warren was outstanding, and Rocky Bernard was our defense, our, our Dr. Pepper player of the game. Two quarterback sacks, ten tackles tied for the team lead. Of course, he had the knee reconstruction last season, and he's back, and he's back in full force. Are you talking about a guy making ten tackles from a defensive line position? That doesn't happen frequently. No, it doesn't. That just tells you how dominant the defensive front four was. They were just absolutely outstanding. Oklahoma State could never really get anything started because they were pushing the line of scrimmage backwards, separating from blocks. A lot of tackle for loss on top, on top of quarterback sacks, and Bernard was the ringleader. Yep, 6'3 and 290 pounds. The senior from Baytown, Texas, is down with Jim Knox. Jim? All right, Drew Rocky, I know it's the A&M wrecking crew, but you are like a one-man wrecking crew today. Over uh, over 10 tackles today, double digits in tackles. Yeah, I, I was really surprised, uh, player of the game and everything. Thing, but uh, defense, we came out ready to play today. You know, uh, all week long we worked hard. You know, that's the one thing we wanted to get done is when we left the field today, we know that we played hard. Is that what happened this past week? R.C. Slocum really challenged the defense to step up, and you guys really took the challenge and it came on and performed a heck of a game today. Right. Um, the last two weeks we played, you know, we didn't really look, we didn't really like the old defense that we were, the wrecking crew defense. So this this past week we worked real hard. You know, Coach, Coach Slocum and all the coaches really got on us and said, look, you know, we're going to play hard, tough, and smart. And we got that done today. Coming out on the field, Rocky, for the first time and looking up in the stands, seeing the Aggie fans decked out in red, white, and blue. What were your thoughts? Oh, that was that was just beautiful, you know. Uh, with all the things that went on the last two weeks and everything, you know, it just feels good to come out here and see all the fans supporting us and supporting everything around America. And, you know, that really inspired us to play real hard today. Yeah, over 82,000 Aggie fans on hand this afternoon. Next week it could be even bigger when Notre Dame comes here to Kyle Field. Yeah, I... I I'm really waiting on that one, you know. I think all the fans and everybody's really going to be hyped up for that one, so we'll see. Rocky Bernard, congratulations on the good game, and best of luck next week. Drew? All right, Jim, thank you. Well put by a thoughtful young man, Rocky Bernard. And as long as you have defenders like he and Ty Warren up front, you're going to be in every football game. We'll come back. Some final thoughts from College Station after this. Back in College Station, 21 to 7. The Aggies prevail over Oklahoma State again. They improve to 3 and 0. Back upstairs with Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman, and uh, Dave, I thought a, a very good performance, obviously, by the Wrecking Crew defense. And a lot of people around the country might not know the names, but they have players. Well, they do, and I think their players this season are up front. You know, Ty Warren, Rocky Bernard, maybe not the linebackers that they've had in the past. This has been linebacker university. Maybe they don't have those recognizable names, but also very tough in the secondary, led by Sammy Davis and, and, uh, and company. Jay Brooks, another fine football player. So defensively, they're very stout. And they'll keep their team in a lot of football games. Yeah, and the secondary performed well because some of those sacks were of the coverage variety. Right. Let's talk a moment about Oklahoma State. Here's what they have next. Northwestern State, they have Missouri, and then number five, Texas at home. And then they have at Iowa State. They'll go to Ames, Iowa then. So it'll be a, a rough month for Oklahoma State, but they've proved that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best teams in this conference. We talked all about Notre Dame, then it's a home against Baylor, and then Colorado and Kansas State on the road. That's what the next four weeks provides for A&M. Well, I, I think A&M got a big win at home. I think o Oklahoma State has shown that they can compete physically with some of the better teams in the conference. You bet, Chip. The final score again, 21-7. to Remember to join us next week, 1230 in the East, for our next Big 12 encounter. Number four, Nebraska in Columbia, Missouri, to take on the Tigers. For Dave Lapham and Jim Knox and our entire crew, Drew Goodman saying so long from Kyle Field.